not by choice. Okay, I'd like to call to order the regular monthly scheduled meeting of the Groveland Township Planning Commission. Let's begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for coming tonight. Uh, Danielle, please, our roll call. Jeff Penzine? Here. Neil Holland? Here. David Newville? Here. Lynn Shane? Yes, ma'am. Jenny McKay? Here. Jim Christopher? Here. Angela Willis? Here. And we have a number of um, additional individuals here tonight in attendance, as Danielle had mentioned earlier. Would you please grace us with the signature on the registry before, before you leave the building? Thank you. Um, I guess I'll move to tonight's agenda. Um, hopefully the members have all had a chance to review that. Uh, I do know two revisions that I would like to cite before uh, I entertain a motion to, uh, to accept the, the agenda. Uh, the first being item A7, the checklist, uh, that will be stricken from tonight's agenda. Additionally, item A17, I believe, yeah, correct? So. My Roman numeral yes. uh, culture is correct. Yeah. That will also be stricken. Um, approve or deny the uh, 2023 no. special use permit. Upon review of the, <coughs> the implicated ordinance, uh, that has to come by way of a public hearing which has to be scheduled some point subsequent to this evening. Okay. So I guess subject to those um, amendments of tonight's agenda, any other questions or comments regarding, um, regarding I that? I when item? Uh, Chip and I discussed the, the, the parking lot lines, and you said blue showed a little better than anything else. It was in the minutes it says you're going to research something else. Did you look at the Google Earth? I think that's what we were talking about. Well, we are, we're just talking about, about the agenda. agenda. Yeah. Well, sorry, Tonight's sorry, agenda. Sorry. Can, I, yeah. can I make a motion we accept yeah. today's agenda with the two changes? Would anybody second that? I'll second it. Any um, questions or further comments? All in favor of admitting? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item approved. The agenda for tonight's meeting will be accepted. On to item six on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes from our last scheduled meeting on March 28th. Can okay, I make a motion that we approve the minutes on <coughs> March 28th? If I could just, oh, I apologize, sir. Forgive me. If I could just interpose for one minute, David, okay. back to you regarding your discussion with Chip. I think the minutes said that uh, Chip was going to research them further, but I, I think. I remember you said that the blue showed the blue up better, showed than, anything better else, than any so other color that, so that, that. that we have found so far. Yeah. So the minutes aren't quite accurate. Uh, Schultz said he would said that blue showed up was the best color. Okay, I'll, I'll admit that mine. Schultz said he would investigate it. I'll admit it. Thank you, David. Are there any so further? I would like a question on page two. At the very bottom, it says if traffic should be capacitated. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, the, 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 uh, believes that the moving of comp uh, competition tickets to only the first of the festival contracting the signing rules and believe that this should back up one to two miles parking lot will not be will not be shut down unless it is at capacity. That doesn't make sense. I thought if it goes two miles, they're going to shut it down. It was shut down before. Our discussion, I think it was the last meeting, but the parking lot wasn't full. That yeah, but created a bigger problem. There's later problem. in, there, there's two different things that I have denoted. One of them says if they shut down the parking, if they sh close the thing, it's closed. Whether the parking lot's filled or not, that's my understanding. Then later on, it said if the parking lot wasn't closed or more people left, they reopened it. And that will cause people to park everywhere else. I got it denoted, and we'll go to it when we do in the meeting. Well, I 
As for the minutes, that's what was said in the meeting. It's recorded. I, I know. So we can finish the minutes and then okay. move on. I made the motion we approve the minutes from the March 23rd, 28th. Would anybody second that motion? I'll second. Please. No, Any further questions or comments on approval of the minutes from the March 28th, 2023 meeting? There being none, um, all those in favor of admission? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There being none, the minutes will be admitted. So continuing with tonight's agenda, there's no resolutions, communications, notices. Public hearing will be deferred. So we'll move along to old business. That being um, the Michigan Renaissance <coughs> Festival and their um, consideration by this uh, commission of their 2023 special use uh, application. Um, there's been a lot of materials submitted. Um, I know everyone's had a fair chance to look through those. Uh, looking at tonight's agenda, I spoke with Danielle, and what I would propose, because it does kind of lend itself to a, I don't know, a, um, a categorical discussion, if you will, it's just that we go <coughs> through the list on the agenda in sequence. Um, if there's presentation by uh, the folks that are here from the festival, I would invite them to, to offer their their comments or their support or their explanation. If there's questions on the part of the commission, uh, concerns, we can all express those in, uh, in an open dialogue. Fair enough? Okay. So the first item on the, uh, the agenda for tonight is insurance. Some of these items obviously will take less discussion than others, uh, but beginning with insurance, uh, who is here from the, from the commission? Can I, can I invite you to introduce your, or from the, Festival. Thank, thank you, Chef. Who's here on behalf of the festival? Could I? So it would be myself, uh, Chip Schultz. Craig. Uh, yes, he does exist. This is uh, James Peterson. He is the owner of oh, the uh, Michigan Renaissance Festival. He is here also on behalf of them. Chris Miller, the Sergeant of Bill County Sheriff's Office, will also take questions tonight. And Richie Abel, who is the owner of the Lee Parking Solutions, who has my presentation. Or during that presentation, we'll also uh, take any questions for you. Again, Chris's last name? Miller. Miller. And? And Cal <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Richie's son. <laughs> also. Mr. Abo, how do you spell your last name? Sure. A, B as in boy, B as in boy, O. And your name, sir, I'm sorry? Cal, C-A-L. C-A-L, okay. And you're with? Again, the Elite Parking Solutions. Okay. All right, thank you. So I guess with that, um, we'll begin with the insurance segment of the, the checklist, if you will. Um, it's fairly straightforward upon reading uh, the information in the packet for this evening. I did um, more curiosity than concern, I suppose, owing to my insurance background, of course. Um, just with regard to the identification of the township as the, the certificate holder, why why is it the, the town Grover Township Hall? Well, that, I can answer that for you, Mr. Chairman. Please do. Yeah, normally, when we get bonds or performance certificates, the township is either named as the insurer or supplemental insured, so that in the event that somebody cancels or changes the insurance in the future, we get notified automatically as part of the provision of those. So. We get that on a lot of work. I think we get that on mining bonds. And so that's a past know. practice that hasn't yeah. reached any. Yeah. Okay. Let's just make sure we know what's going on, you know, not to belabor it, but at one point we had a mining company submit a bond, <laughs> submit a bond to really a bogus offshore company. So we usually send the stuff to the township attorney to make sure it's legit. And I guess the limit of coverage is that, um, I know it's liability for workers' comp, uh, if that's pursuant to the, the ordinance. Is that is that a true statement? Yeah, I think no, I, so. Yeah, I think so. Because I noticed that the, um, 
like the sheriff's department contract, for example, has a higher limit of liability coverage in comparison to the township. Is there a, is there a reason why a million dollars was was the limit? Is that, again, historical? Yeah. Well, some of them, like the sheriff probably, I'm guessing, automatically carries a higher limit. Would be my guess on their insurance. I mean, we have usually a threshold we set that I think Liz or somebody goes through when we get it, but sometimes the, the limits on it are higher. We're doing a contract, I think, right now with the state police, and I think our normal limit's higher than what they're actually asking for on the building. So we so don't do a lower one for them to give them the one we have. So the million is not, or the million is not a statutory or a local no, ordinance it, it, Without looking at it, I, I don't actually check those. I think the uh, planner does it when they go through it. Okay. Um, any other questions regarding insurance? Next item then would be traffic analysis. Uh, the traffic analysis was dense, it was lengthy, uh, it was very difficult. This is why I suppose we had subject matter experts involved at one phase because um, I just, I get lost in the minutia of the numbers. Um, but I guess just as a, as a broad statement, my first question would be, how did they determine, um, and if I get rambling and I'm not making sense here, folks, please let me know. But how did they determine that the peak day was September 4th? I think that was just the day that was chosen uh, pre-festival. And in, in a kind of backward looking view, was that, Kind of consistent with the attendance counts for the 2022 festival was that in fact your peak which, which day did they do that on? September, September 4th, 4th which was all the information 2022 in the peak yep. I think which that, was that would have been the Labor Day weekend it was Labor Day weekend so it was the Sunday of Labor Day weekend yeah. we would peak the following weekend yeah I was going to say it's usually the following yeah. On September 4th, you had an attendance of 19,000. Uh, going up to September 17th, 22,000. September 24th, 21,000. And then the last weekend, uh, October 1st, 26,000. And October 2nd, 23,000. So I guess that was my observation. Thank you, Neil. Like, this was the identified peak, um, you know, attendance weekend when in fact the numbers showed that was not in fact the case. It was a three day weekend. I think they did it because it was a three day weekend. Um, so, but that, that, I understand that, what you're saying. Right? Yeah. See the problem there? Yeah, I know when, I you're, when you're taking a data collection and you have your uh, your mean, if you will, is, is inaccurate, it kind of throws off your entire study. So just an observation as we kind of go forward. Um, We'll do public comments at the end. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> the traffic, and, and again, these are just my comments. I'm gonna invite other folks to weigh in. Uh, this was from data collected in 2022. So this was really a component of the special use permit approval for last season, correct? correct. We finally, the festival finally got around to completing that. Correct. Because if I look at that study, um, Rural engineering that finished. Correct. So was that study, um, is it going to be useful as, as far as this season's event? Yes. How so? Because we're, we've been working with Richie using those numbers to create what we would call a, a flow rate help us know that we need to get X amount of cars into the parking lot to keep a good flow of vehicles moving on basic highway to uh, ensure that we don't back up. So Chip, I appreciate that. The problem I have, again, with the study and the identified peak day is the summary, and I'm referring to the Moran or the, the row, letter, page 10, 
The summary, and I'm just going to read it, based upon the review of the study area, the public roadway network operates in an acceptable condition during a peak festival day with minimal queuing on the public roadway system. And that, as we know from experience, is not entirely accurate, right? Um, and that was, I guess that's my question, when you read that summary, when in my opinion, it's inaccurate and it's based upon um, a peak day that was not borne out in the statistics, uh, how is this gonna benefit, you know, other than what you've already explained? How is it gonna benefit us in 2023? I think when we get to this, I'm probably gonna answer a lot of your questions. Okay. okay. So we will, I think what, what's inaccurate that? about it? Good question. The, they're saying the inaccuracy is it's not the peak day. It should have been done recently. Yeah. I think a lot of the stuff you guys are gonna ask me will probably be answered. Okay. Over there. Fair enough. Thanks, Chuck. Um, what is I I got just a quick question. Um, when they refer to um, when the role refers to the 95th percentile queue on public road, roadways, what are they defining as 95th percentile queue? I, that yeah, I, in this world, I don't know. I, I don't know I, if that's a general. And we don't have anybody here from road yeah, answer that. I didn't know if that was a general calculation that they made. I Well, I did ask her. Um, I did ask um, the young lady who put this together. Yeah. Haley? Haley, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, I did ask Haley some questions about this study, and then I did ask, um, you know, are you telling me that uh, our peak times were between 11 and 2? Um, and are these, I asked this good question, are these acceptable standards? And does this other companies use the same standard that you use to establish this? And she said yes. So I would assume not knowing that yes, the 95 percentile is probably a standard that is used across the industry. Yeah, that's what I was trying to market. figure out if, if that's a standard or if that's based on them selecting that peak day. I, I mean, I was assuming looking at standard. it, it looks like it's a standard, but yeah. it would be great to have just a little bit more definition. Are, are they referring to that as as a saying that the 95th percentile will meet these characteristics? Is that what they're saying? Because the, the, the only thing I can no, pick up all is, it is is it's just a calculation. So what they're what they're doing is, and I'm referring to Table Four. Mm -hmm. so what you're looking at is peak hours, 95th percentile queue comparison for unsignalized intersections. Is what it is. So basically, what they're doing is they they basically, if it's correct, they're taking the standard, which is 95th percentile, which would be a worst case scenario queue. And they're, they're plugging that into basically what you're, what they were observing during that peak day, you know, um, during the different, the a.m., the midday, and the p.m., and seeing how that lays out based on 95th percentile. I think that's what they're doing. I think the reason I asked was I know I'm, the only other time I've heard some of the phrases is when we have the MSP or the Road Commission mm -hmm. do a traffic study for us, like on Grange Hall Road. Yeah. They come back and they say, for example, we, we studied the traffic on Grange Hall Road between Station 2 and Van Road before we bought those speed signs that were getting ready to put yeah. up, right? And they came back and said, the 85th percentile is 61 and a half miles an hour. And what they're usually referring to is, out of all the cars that went down the road, 85th percentile of, of those cars, 85th percent, we're going 61 and a half or less miles an hour. And they use that to figure out whether or not it's a really prevalent speed <coughs> We'll get people that say, oh, they're going 80 or 90 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. yeah, it might be a car that did that. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering. If that yeah, the same it, there's a couple different definitions for percentile because okay. you can also look at that as worst case, where it gets used whenever 95th percentile, like in engineering, that means basically 5%. So that's where there, there okay. needs to be clarity on what, how they're defining percentile, the 95th percentile. Well, one of my concerns with the study, I was looking at their rating level of service and they uh, use that as a time metric. Um, midday, 34 seconds, peak, 31 
19.6 seconds and then later 39 seconds. Um, as a target, they say at 50 seconds, quote, safety may be a problem and some disruption to major street traffic stream may result. Uh, if we're at 39 seconds at a attendance day of 19,000 and we then fast forward to October with an attendance of 26,000, 30% increase in attendance, um, that level of service, if it goes up 36%, we're going to be well into that 52nd range, uh, which they're declaring as a safety issue. Uh, how do you anticipate addressing that? So and so up, and I'm not sure what they're addressing right there as far as, are they, are they saying that it's 36 seconds it takes for a car to turn, Is it which would be completely wrong? I'm just going off what I they know. said in their report, in their conclusion. So I would have to defer to Haley and ask her what, and I apologize, had I known there were going to be questions in regards to their road engineering's report, I would have asked yeah. Haley to be here, and I, I know. Come on. Right? I just, I just look at that as from their conclusion. No, I, I that we're at 39 that. seconds at a attendance of 19,000 and we've got queues of 13 to 17 cars. Um, what happens when we add another 30% of traffic? That was my concern. Well, oh, I understand and I'll get an answer for it. So is there a way that, I mean, because basically what they lay out here is a model. I mean, that's, that's basically what this is. No, it's, but is there a way to go back to the road based on your, your true peak day and have them just rerun and then based on the model that they created here, have them rerun it and say, okay, based on that, where are we yeah, at? I would say, and I would say that that's probably not a possibility because on the day that they did the study, they had all the equipment there and they were monitoring the traffic and they were getting their flows. Right. I don't, they, they probably didn't have it on no, you don't, wouldn't need it. What you could do is based on, you have to take assumptions, right? Mm -hmm. So based on this, I mean, they, I, I we kind of talked about this before, is this would be a start to basically create a model. And then based on that model, which they, they give references there, I have to go back and make a determination, right? Yeah. Based on your peak day, okay, I can now answer. Where, where are we at? I can answer. Yeah. Thank you, Angela. That's yeah. actually rather, that yeah, could be it, rather useful. Because um, it, it is useful information, even though it's not the true peak day. And it's it, it's a, a nice insight as a starting point for a model. And then now, okay, now run your numbers from the peak day, see where you land. Odds are it's, it's just like what you observed, you know, but have them report out based on it. It is difficult to kind of foretell. I mean, to a certain degree, I, I think you folks know your uh, your attendance history you know, rather well. But it's still difficult to predict which weekend will be your peak weekend. So I think what she's suggesting is that actually rather ingenious because if they could use um, September fourth, whether it's a peak day or otherwise, as the mean. Uh, you may be able to, as, as Neil had suggested, kind of give us a better feel for when we hit percentages at the end of October, at the beginning of October, what we we might more likely be looking at. Does that yeah. make sense? I understand exactly. Yeah. And that can help you guys too in terms of how to better prepare for those days. Okay. Any other um, questions or comments to offer from the commission on the um, the traffic study? And assuming these numbers mean the number of cars? These meaning what? I mean, what are you not saying? They have numbers. One car, 13, and this is at a.m. peak hour, the hours that they had. Yeah, if, from 10 to 11, I'm assuming. I'll, I'll try to explain what she's referring to for the benefit of the, the room here. But they, this illustration by Roe, these numbers <coughs> show which direction the traffic and is it the number of cars? Correct. Yes. Okay, that's yes. what I assume. Yes. Okay, thumbs up. Yes. Any other questions on the uh, yeah. traffic study? Um, Jim? You said uh, 
helpful for us to ask the chips team to have one of the consulting engineers present at our next meeting? I mean, I, I, I think it would help, but I mean, if they can at least go back through as an action item and re-evaluate based on the true peak time, you know, they've got a starting point here, take what they have here and run the numbers through with the assumptions, using the assumptions that are based on the data from what they generated, and, and then have them report out based on that. I mean, but then again, you know, as I think about it, the traffic study is a glimpse of counts in 2022, right? right. So what, what I think is more important to us is actually further down the agenda, that being the, um, the management plan. Uh, yeah, yeah. Correct? Yeah, yeah. You know absolutely. what I'm saying? So, so I guess it would, be, it would be useful as far as interpreting the data and giving us a sense of what might occur, but um, I don't know, just thinking aloud here, maybe, maybe the, the better option would be to entertain what the plan is for this year according to uh, the application and the documents and the submission in its entirety. Well, I, I still think it's a good idea to reevaluate based on those the true peak numbers because that management plan could very well need to be modified. We don't know. Yeah. It, it may be fine, but I, I think going blindly into it without having that run, and it's not going to be accurate, I get that, but at least it's a start, and it gives us at least a, a rough idea, because I, I think we made some assumptions too last year, and and those assumptions may not have been necessarily correct. Um, so I, I think by going through this exercise, then I think we've got even more information as we're going through and evaluating the management. I think I understand what your concerns are, and I agree the points are valid, but I'm kind of guessing from the discussion with, because Jim and I had a couple of discussions weeks ago working on this, and I think his intention was also in there to change the promo ticket, the availability, yeah, it takes which, which would take those three peak weekends, if you take that assumption and those tickets are out of there, I, I don't want to put words in there. But I think what you're planning to do is show them that part of the plan, which would change the total numbers for those other weekends. And I don't know, but when you pull those days out, that might make that day the high one. It's, or, it's, I don't know that for sure. It's, I think that's a possibility. And Bob, thank you. But now you're talking about speculation on top of, um, you know, kind of the data you have already. Right? No, so no, it's, it's almost like a double layer of um, estimation. But I do agree with I do agree with Angela, uh, and, and as Jim suggested, that maybe it would be beneficial if you speak with your consultant Haley or whoever it is, and they could give us some further insight on how these numbers might play out if if we kind of grow the percentages sure. a bit. That would be helpful to us. If, if I leave it to your discretion, or I guess I would invite comment, but I would suggest we leave it to your discretion. The festival's um, discretion as to whether you have somebody. It would be helpful. Okay. Okay. Fair enough? Yeah. I think it's great. Anything else on the, uh, the traffic study? No? Okay, we'll move along to the next item. Uh, that being that the counts, the traffic counts, am I correct? Is that the next item? Yeah, yeah. That's the, well, it says traffic counts is item three. Um, that, and as I read it, that was kind of incorporated into the road study. Is that yeah. correct? Should be, yes. Yeah. But it's a separate agenda item. I don't know if there's any, you know, separate discussion or deliberations on that. No, anything further from the festival? No. All right, then we'll move along to um, item Roman numeral four, capacity reports. This is the attendance records. Yes. Sir. And we were provided those. Um, I did not print them. Seemed fairly straightforward. Last year was a um, big season. 
Is there, if I could just ask, is there an expectation on the part of the festival for this year's event? Well, obviously we would like to do as well as we did last year, and we always want to add, right? Um, and as everyone is aware, it's weather, not bad, sorry, it's weather permitted. That really is the um, basis for our attendance. If we have a terrible Saturday of second weekend, third weekend, that Saturday might be a little bit more because people are available now to come out. So, uh, let's hope for, I would love to have beautiful weather every day. We don't have to worry about X amount of people coming because the weather is terrible. I mean, I think we, I think we know um, on our end, opening weekend is typically our quietest weekend because we have green cruise weekend yeah, going on. Uh, in my in my own personal opinion, over the years of doing this, uh, I've created my own personal uh, opinions. And I think opening weekend, green cruise weekend, we're just in the middle of August. We're open for seven weekends. People, hey, I can go to festival. Day. Second weekend comes along. We're probably still in that. Want to go to the cabin? We want to go to this. We want to go to Cedar Point. We want to go do that. <coughs> People are getting out. About third weekend Labor Day, uh, you get some people still want to go up north. But hey, let's go to festival. Uh, so I think we're going to see uh, maybe a little bit of a more repeat then. Fourth weekend, kids are back in school. But if the weather's nice, we might be able to scoot back up north again. Go to the cider mill or do uh, those things that are open because festival's still here, right? That's why I believe we get busier that fifth, sixth, seventh weekend is because now people are taking care of all their summer stuff and they're getting into the fall stuff and let's get the festival going. And we have seen, and you'll see in my presentation, and we've spoken about it, we do have a huge increase in the use of comp tickets those last three weekends because now they're taking care of all their family and personal stuff. We got tickets to the Renaissance Festival next day. Well, Chip, that kind of that's almost like the unintended consequence of the impact just the right <laughs> yeah because as you get deeper into the season uh the weather if you hit if you hit a nice stretch absolutely and people are looking to the whole know, soak up the season then you can get some big crowds the hope and plan is that people will, those, those people that were used to using those comp tickets the last few weekends will notice that they can't use them the last few weekends they're going to have to use them within the first four so we might see a, a, a peak in that attendance those first four weekends, and then after that, those tickets aren't in, they're not valuable. And you're going to see, uh, sorry, um, you're going to see my presentation. But we are going to have, just so you are aware, we do a lot of media, but we're only going to allow 500. It's all we're going to print. It's all we're going to hand out. There will be 500 comp tickets that we'll be allowed to use those last three weekends, just so we can take care of some of those uh, media and marketing. 500. <coughs> we were getting 7,000 a day, but 500 is not bad. It's going to make a difference. Yeah. Chip, thank you. Um, I guess any other comments or questions on the, uh, the capacity attendance reports? No? So then you touched on the, um, uh, the revision of the ticket structure. I guess that's a perfect segue into the overview, which is our next item agenda, or agenda item, I should say. Chip, this is where I'm going to turn it over to you for the okay. benefit of the room here. Perfect. Okay. So that'll be our, our PowerPoint here. Go right ahead. All right. First, um, ready. first, I want to thank you for allowing us to, to do all of this. Um, I know that um, it's very trying time. Uh, the past years, uh, last year and the year before, um, has been very difficult. And, uh, we're hoping that moving forward and the changes that we're going to make are, are going to alleviate some of these, if not all of these problems. And uh, again, thank you for allowing me to take that time. I, I would first like to, I've already introduced Richie. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing this year, and you're going to see in the presentation, is um, we, we have contracted, we're going to be contracting with Richie to provide a professional parking company. So if you don't mind, if you would just let Richie uh, just say a little bit about himself before we get started. All right. Yeah, thanks everybody. I'm Richie Abbo. Um, I started this just a few years ago, back in 1988. Um, I, was, I, was, I was a sophomore in college and just started parking cars with a valley attendant in Southfield. 
Um, by culture, we are a valet parking company, but in the last 10, 15 years, uh, we've gotten into traffic management, traffic control, inside parking lots. Um, I'm a pretty impatient guy and I don't like lines. I don't like people waiting in lines. Um, parking is my thing. I sleep, drink, eat, parking. Uh, my best friends, my wife, my kids think I'm a weirdo, but that's how I am. Get you. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's what we do. Um, we, you know, I, 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 we look at logistics and try to make them better for and faster and quicker, and of course, safety being the biggest thing. What what size venues have you done in the past? Um, I, we've so we've worked at Ford Field. Um, we've done valet parking there. Um, we actually parked 422 cars in 77 minutes. Uh, that's going all the way around. The Ford Field. Um, we've worked the St. Mary's uh, Orchard Lake Fair. That is no longer a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. um, which was a really difficult uh, operation because there was there's so many different parking lots and uh, actually they're not parking lots. They're they're grass and 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 we and we didn't paint them or anything like that. Um, the challenge there is we, we took 30 or 40 team members there. 15 per shift, and we would get the, um, the students and their parents to help. Uh, they like to go eat hot dogs and run away, and we would lose them for a little bit, and we kind of controlled everything. So over the years, we, we brought more of our staff in. Uh, our goal there was, the issue there was uh, traffic on Commerce Road and Orchard Lake Road. So we, if we had a backup on Commerce Road, Nice Saturday, uh, remember it's three, four days at most, three days in a row, right? Labor Day weekend, or Memorial Day weekend. Um, if we saw uh, the, a backlog on Commerce Road, we would unbottle that bat by opening Orchard Lake Road where Seminary Drive is, and within 20 minutes of the, the line would go away. And we had the, the, the support of the Oakland County Sheriff's um, that was amazing. I'd also like uh, Sergeant Miller, uh, Chris Miller, um, to kind of tell you about him and how long he's been doing with the Sheriff's Office and also associated with the Renaissance Festival as well. Good evening, thank you for having me here. Uh, Sergeant Chris Miller, 33 years with the Sheriff's Department, uh, about 20 some odd years in special events. Uh, I was a liaison for Pine Nam, the Sheriff's Office. Uh, I had experience when I was in Rochester Hills with Meadowbrook. Uh, back in Independence, also, uh, oh geez, I'm trying to blink, uh, Mount Zion, because they also have a concert venue there. And then, of course, Renaissance Festival, and then every other festival that we had, including St. Mary's. And that's where I uh, become, uh, became well acquainted with uh, the elite parking. Uh, one of the things that I liked about, just to touch on your company, was with St. Mary, that was a lot of people in a highly populated area and the parking was very unique in the fact that it was just all these irregular shaped plots, nothing marked like you said, and they were able to switch on the fly. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I thought so highly of them. I mean, they could adapt at a moment's notice and, and move things around and, and um, it was almost like a Tetris game with these cars and they did such a wonderful job. And uh, I've, had that experience with Pine Knob as well um, over the years. You know, that's a, a 18, they'll tell you a max of 15.5, that's garbage. Uh, I've seen 20,000 people in that place. And it's a constant ebb and flow of trying to get those cars in. Um, so with that being said, I'm sorry, I don't want to take up too much more of that, but that's my experience. Sergeant Miller is also the uh, command officer who created the standard operating procedures for the Renaissance Festival. Um, he put in a lot of hours, time, sweat, um, emails back and forth uh, between himself, myself, the lieutenant, and the captain. Um, so those SOPs that I think you guys received them, that's all his. He, he's the mastermind behind um, putting that together so that we position the patrol cars perfectly to allow maximum traffic flow. But, so that I just wanted you guys to hear from both of them. So let's, um, Here's what we know, 2023 Michigan Renaissance Festival. 2022, 
traffic didn't work. Parking did not work. Um, our conclusion is that uh, the issue was primarily a result of failure to park cars efficiently, which is also a conclusion supported by the row engineering uh, traffic study. I think there's a line in there that actually does specify that it wasn't a Dixie Highway issue, it was more of a internal issue. So with that being said, as you know, we have retained the services of Elite Parking Solutions. Um, after researching and meeting with multiple, I called over 20, almost 30, people, 30 different companies. Um, we narrowed it down to two companies, and Elite came out on top. They're a local company. They have an impeccable references, um, including a letter from the Sheriff's Office. 15 years parking Orchard Lake St. Mary's Festival. The owner, Richie, as he stated, he's got 30 plus years um, of experience and will be on site at all times during the festival days. He has over 100 people to train, to, to get from. Everybody knows, back to the last slide, we didn't do well last year. And part of that problem was we just didn't have the staff in the parking lots. This year, uh, they're gonna be responsible for the devel development and the execution of internal traffic and parking plans, which I'm gonna show you. Uh, they're also responsible for the staffing and the managing um, of the day-to-day -day parking. They're gonna give us a detailed, which I think I spelled wrong, hourly schedule of the staff and positioning of the staff. Key management present at all times. The vast majority of the hours will be staffed with approximately 40 people. Now those will be at peak time. Obviously, at eight o'clock in the morning, I don't need 40 people there. But at 10 o'clock, 9.30, 10, all the way to 2.30, 3 o'clock, maybe four o'clock on some days, we are looking to have 40 people. That's 20 people to a side, which um, will be huge for us this year. This year we're also doing something that festival's never done before. We're gonna charge for parking. No man. Yeah, you used to do that too. We've never charged. Oh, oh, yes, you did. Somebody may have, but it wasn't us. <laughs> 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 that was my very first year. It was highly profitable for somebody. Somebody, somebody made some money because, Mr. Peterson, this has been a thing for Mr. Peterson all wow, these years. Really? Then we must have got ripped off. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, with the charger. So uh, parking vouchers will be available online. So they'll be able to pre-buy their parking voucher. Those people who don't see that they can pre-buy their voucher online will be able to purchase it when they arrive. However, that purchase will not be made until their car is physically parked and they're out of their vehicle. We don't want to slow down any traffic coming in for the festival. So someone's going to be collecting money? Yes. So that's why you need the 40 people. Here. Well, no, I'm hiring a completely different set of people to do that. I do not want them touching money. You know, I want them involved in all of that because I want them to get the cars parked on off the Dixie Highway. Yeah. I'm just throwing up a thought. Uh, I don't want to jump ahead on no, conversation. You're good. Um, with charging for parking, how is that going to affect the people that want to park off site and try to walk in? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm we'll, just, I know you're nope, just throwing I it out. I completely agree with you and I completely understand and that will be the, the sheriff's office, the state police, will that'll be part of the. And, and if I could just, David, for, um, Neil, thank you, and thank you. But if we could just let Chip get through the presentation, everybody table your questions so he's had a chance to, to however you want to do it. Side of the equation, so part of it would be appreciated. Do you have some tape? <laughs> <laughs> so part of the uh, what we're hoping, what one of the other solutions we're hoping for by charging for parking is, it will be per car, not per person. So it'll be per car. And what we're hoping, and what I have found over the last few years of actually being the one in the parking lot parking those cars, we're getting a lot of one, one people, one person to a car or two people to a car, where before we were getting three, four, five. But COVID, I'm assuming, is to blame for that. So the hope is that by charging a per car fee, we're no longer going to get those two to a car. We're going to get the four, the five, the six in the van. The families coming out as a group instead of paying that extra thing. Instead of paying, you know, per car, we're hoping that you'll be able to get more groups of people coming together versus the individuals. Parking plan. Ms. Willis, this is 
all for you. Yay. <laughs> so on a nice light day, probably opening weekend, we're going to uh, go back up to Dixie Highway, elite parking lot, the sheriff's office, we'll fill both parking lots simultaneously at the same time. Just like we do every day, every morning, this will be our start. Plan B, on a more heavier day, we're realizing that we need to move some cars um, a little faster than on a, on a lighter day. Uh, the sheriff's office, along with elite parking, will start simultaneously parking multiple areas of the parking lot. And before I forget, I'm so sorry. Behind you, or behind us, in front of you, are our site maps. These are um, over here is where we're going to be positioning flaggers and what we call point people to help the flow of traffic. Um, then we have our exit map right here. These two maps right here are um, showing the traffic flow that I'm going to get into a little bit to show you how we're going to bring cars into the lot this year versus what we've done in the past. These maps right here are our signs. Internal signs, Dixie Highway signs. We're going to increase, you're going to see again, we're going to increase our signs. Um, but on those medium days, we're then going to start parking simultaneous parking lots within the festival grounds. We're going to be able to pull cars in and start sending, you know, 40 people to this lot, 40 people to the lat lot, so we can keep those lots flowing and increasing the amount of cars. The key for us this year is going to be getting cars onto our grounds and then getting them parked. Yeah. Can I interject it for a second? Sure. Yes, sir. So if, if you could picture um, our, our 40 attendants um, in an orange or yellow shirt, right, that's indicating parking with a flag, just moving people along, getting them off Dixie Highway, moving them along, not stopping and asking questions, not a drive through, <laughs> just keep things going. So in a professional manner. Yep. And then plan C. Plan C, it's a busy day. We are getting close to capacity for our parking lot. Uh, we have, and I'll share it with you um, here in just a second, but we do have a plan in place um, when it comes time to hit. Hopefully never, um, but if we have to close the gates, uh, we've put a plan in place to accommodate that. some new with this creation of new roads uh, and that is in our interior perimeter we are um, the way that we're going to bring the cars in we're going to be stacking approximately three miles of cars on festival ground versus out on Dixie Highway that's the goal we're going to get all those cars on festival ground and we can move them instead of having them sit on Dixie so we're going to... Can I ask one question? So when you were way back in Columbia, I know you had a huge stack lot there. I, I don't know how long it was, but you know what it was? I don't, but that's a long... Yeah, I mean, I, this might be... A, 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 yeah, I definitely get it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of how long it was. Yeah. yeah. That, that was one of the benefits. You had a big you had stack. You long stack yeah. line. You're, you're going to see we're going to do that again. Um, we're going to... That's we're going to expand the width of the main entrance. We're going to add about 15, 10 to 15 feet um, to allow us to facilitate a two-lane split coming into the main into the main gate. Once again, getting a two-lane split will allow us to get traffic off the of Dixie Highway and keep that traffic in. Um, and then it's going to say refer to the new roads in both keys and Queens lot, which I can I, I believe I have on, on a slide and I can show you what I'm talking about. So, traditionally, what we did to park what is called the main entrance or the north lot, we call it the Kings lot. We would bring cars in off the Dixie Highway, we would run them down here, we park, and then we would park here. So this is the only lane that we use. The change we're going to make this year for that parking lot specifically is we're going to split them here, and we're going to run one lane all the way back up 
what I'm going to say is DC Highway, but it's not DC Highway. It's the interior perimeter of the festival. We're going to run them up here. We're going to bring them up towards Laring Road, and then we're going to bring them back down here, and then we're going to start parking so the cars are going in this direction. This is one of our, you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parking lots, right? In plan B, when I said we were going to park multiple parking lots, this is where this comes in play. If we notice that we need to start parking more cars faster, this guy right up here that's going to be sitting here, he's going to start pulling cars and sending them down here, sending cars here. So we're going to multi, we're going to, we're going to be parking this lot simultaneously on a heavier day. Okay. When we split them here, we're going to run them all the way up to here, and we're going to be parking this lot simultaneously. Once this lot is full, we're then going to adjust our parkers and our flaggers down to this lot right here, and we're going to start parking them all along, just keeping those cars going. This is our handicap parking, which will, won't change. Um, so we have the ability to park multiple parking lots as we're doing it. And we believe by bringing these cars up this way and bringing them over this way, we also get, I think, which is a concern of the commission um, and the township, emergency vehicle access, because now have a free lane going into the festival if the fire department needs to come in this is almost going to be a clear shot other than one line of cars so you still have the access if they use oh yeah the road yeah yes yeah. 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 okay. yep just yeah. in case you need to uh, just as a caution you need to cover that with chief mason so we know he's yep he's aware yeah right. um yeah see, i ran this past okay mason and the command officers um so there's our thought on bringing cars in off the DC highway so that we're not stacking them here out to there. We're going to run them over here. Um, we truly believe this is going to be a huge benefit for us uh, in that way. I'm going to break down the road here. Because they've got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> what about egress? So that's the nice part about egress. They'll all come over this way and then go out here. Um, the sheriff's office does a really good job of opening this up. So, um, Chip, I thought in last, harking back to last year's approval, there was a loop, and that was the whole design. South lot. Yeah, the other parking lot. The other lot. Yeah. The other lot. Yeah. Both lots. Yeah. It will. Okay. Yeah. Shut up. Dude. The other <laughs> parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're not there. The other parking lot. <laughs> yeah. But here, right. for, but just for egress purposes on this one, right. as the day is going and we're still bringing these cars in, that's going to be the nice advantage is when these people start leaving, this is going to be an open lane for them to get out. It'll be an easier route for them to get out. The Queen's Lot area is the one that Jeff is speaking of. That would be this exit right here. So the Queen's Lot, everyone knows we come north up Dixie Highway. We bring them in here. We're going to split them in the two lanes right there. And the reason we're choosing that is just because of handicap and motorcycle. Handicap people, motorcycles, they got to go this way because we have specific parking for them. So right about here, we're going to split them into two lanes. We're going to run two lanes all the way up here. Now let me tell you what we did in the past. Let me tell you what changes we're going to do in the future. We would bring these traffic up, and then we would send people this way, we would send people this way, and then we would start parking them as we went this way. I'm sitting in Florida looking at this map, and it hit me. We've been screwing this up. We should have been parking the way that we're going to do it this year. And I've worked with Richie and his son at getting this out. Now we're going to bring, because what happens is, if you're running these two lanes up here and you're parking this, where is where is where is this lane going? It's going right back to Dixie Highway, right? Right. right? So the plan this year, we're going to split them into two. We're going to run them up here. We're going to take one to the left, one to the right, and we're going to bring them all the way back down here and all the way back down here, and we're gonna park it this way. This will, in a sense, this lot itself will have two miles worth of traffic inside the festival grounds um, at all times because of the way that we're bringing these cars in. Plan B, medium, heavy day. We're gonna, we're parking it this way Hey, we gotta get some cars off the DC highway, getting a little backed up. We're gonna move the deputy down here to VIP. There's no one leaving yet. We're still, people are coming in. So we're gonna shift our parking, 
we're still going to be bringing cars in and parking them here, but then we're going to shift and we're going to start just flooding this emergency exit. And we're going to start parking this lot number three. And we're going to bring those cars back this way so that we can get these off of KC Highway. Um, and then you can also park over here on the side. Uh, we can take some of these cars that are on that inside lane and start parking them there. So the plan is to stack the cars on festival ground and not this way. Not blocking Perryville Road, not blocking other roads. Um, what's, what about the mental health cars? Do we have a deputy there? Because those people call them on. That we're going to have to, we will be monitoring that. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, especially towards those last few weekends. Um, we'll be monitoring how those people are able to get in and out, and if we have to, we'll shift the deputy over there like we did last year to accommodate them, and that, that won't be a problem. So that's the that's that's the parking lots, and that's kind of how we're, at, and uh, Mr. Fender, uh, your question about exiting. So at the end of the night, when we're gonna exit this lot, we are actually, and, and it's in another slide, but we are gonna put signs all around here pointing people exit out this uh, way here. There, there shouldn't be any, by the time these people are starting to leave, our traffic should be resolved and we shouldn't be using this as an entrance at that time. So, and then this is coned off because we had no problems last year other than the mobile home park people, some of them couldn't get out, but um, we'll, we'll address that with the sheriff's office. Um, and then people just go south and, and they leave. This lot actually empties itself for beautiful, putting that Putting that road in last year uh, was a godsend for us. I'm glad we suggested it. I'm yeah. glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the complimentary ticket uh, policy, a significant decrease in the complimentary tickets uh, the last three weekends. As I stated to you before, we are going to have marketing 500 comp tickets uh, that they'll be able to use for the last three weekends. 2022, we saw 35,712 comp tickets redeemed through one day one through day 16. That's a lot of comp tickets. 28% of those uh, were the first four weeks, 10,342. Last three weekends, we saw 72%. Um, I just went back and redid some math from our last meeting. 72%, um, 25,371 comp tickets were redeemed in the last three weekends. We feel that by eliminating them virtually all the comp ticket uh, usage the last three weekends, uh, will create a significant decrease in attendance on those uh, 12 on the weekend, and then no more than 500 comp tickets used to be used. This is a sample of what the complimentary ticket will look like. And it clearly says ballot for weekends one through four and Festival Friday. Festival Friday is about a five to 6,000 person day for us. So uh, we will allow those to take these. You're welcome. Thank you. This is what I want. Just for you. <laughs> uh, and it will clearly, the, so the nice part about our tickets are this one is a sideways ticket. Most of ours are up and down uh, for purchasing. So hopefully this is gonna be one way for people to distinguish between a comp complimentary ticket. And you can see um, we put the actual dates up there as well. And we did not include our full run uh, out of fear that somebody would see September uh, 17th and go, oh, I can use this. Well, no, you can't. You can only use Festival closed due to capacity. This is for you, Ms. Love. If we have to close the Renaissance Festival due to traffic, I am having 10 of these signs made up. They will be put up and down Dixie Highway. I've actually talked to Chief Mason already, and one of them will be at the fire station that they will walk out and put out there for me. Um, this, and, and we chose the wording specifically to address those people who don't want to listen. Um, my thought was, we could have put lot full, but then what are people going to do? Park cars, park. They're going to park cars there. But if we say festival closed due to capacity, hopefully their brain says, oh, I guess we should have gotten here sooner, we'll try to come back another day. That's the plan. That, that the wording was done specifically for that purpose. We will also, I, I have it in. So this is hard to read and I apologize, but it is the unlikely occurrence the parking lots of the Michigan Renaissance Festival are approaching capacity. The festival will close its gates for the remainder of the day. 
or until a sufficient amount of parking spaces become available for us to open the gates and allow people to come back in. Upon notice uh, from the on-site director of parking, Mr. Abo, or the independent third party, or on-site director of parking operations, oh, that's probably gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or the independent third party professional, Richie, uh, retained by Custom will, will likely reach, he's gonna let me know, A, we're getting close to being at capacity. We're really only like a 30 to 45 minute time frame. Once that uh, conversation takes place, I will then be notifying the Sheriff's Office Command. They will notify their deputies currently out on this highway that we're gonna be looking to uh, close the gates. We will then deploy, once that time comes and the, the, the call is made to close the gates, we're gonna deploy those uh, festival close due to capacity signs. The Sheriff's Office will be standing out on Dixie Highway waving people to keep on going. And that was the problem we had last year. And the deputies were out there, because I was standing there with them. And they were telling people to keep moving. The problem was, people looked in the parking lot and said, well, you still have parking, and that's those people that went, oh, you're not closed, you're doing it. Um, those are the people that went park where they shouldn't have. So we're gonna be out there in full force, moving people along and pushing them to keep on going. Uh, the Sheriff's Department, uh, we'll be given signs that we're going to put the same sign. We'll be at their patrol cars. Uh, by execution of the closing of the gates, the signs will be placed on the Dixie Highway to advise patrons of the festival close. Festival management will also change. Again, that'll be me. I will go to the, my phone and I'll change all the digital signs um, on I-75 as well as Dixie Highway, staying the same. From there, the Sheriff's Department will begin monitoring the traffic on Dixie Highway and enforcing no parking ordinances were applicable. Um, some of your roads, uh, they, they can't enforce it because of the, the state police's ordinance, however that works here. Uh, if needed, buyer's towing will be dispatched in the of vehicles. Uh, there are no parking zones. Vehicles will be towed to the building. So we, we, we've talked about this. Um, one of the options we have, and I, I shouldn't have put this in there, but years ago, if you remember, Bob, we had the same uh, issue. We had to tow vehicles. We actually just took them down to the fire station. Uh, you see, you see that fenced in area? That was actually designed for this. Uh, it was a small impound. The tow truck driver sat there. The people were directed to the fire station. They paid the tow truck driver there and got the car. Instead of going all the way down to the lot. Um, so that, that, that's an option that we have. That we'll have to uh, talk to Bob and the fire department. It's okay with Katie, just to make sure it's clear yeah, cheap, but sometimes you put practice vehicles right. with birds and stuff like yeah. that. Uh, this protocol will continue until the parking lot has been cleared enough to safely allow parking to resume. My hope and intention is that by people seeing the signs and, and the advertising we're putting out there, that they will just keep on going and we'll be able to clear Dixie Highway and use all the Is there a way, this is good, but to get, you know, you always get one that's going to sneak Room, right? Is there a way to inform uh, the ticket takers at the, you know, at the entrance gate where you tell them, hey, we're closed. Well, there should so be anybody coming through those gates. You don't make sure you inform them so they, yeah. they can turn them away Absolutely. and then that forces them to get off the route. So the deputies patrol, and they're right at all those entrances. Yeah. So nobody will be allowed in. I can tell you firsthand, we did have a gentleman last year who started to get a little mouthy um, and Lucky for him, I interceded uh, and used my so negotiating court. skills <laughs> uh, <laughs> to skills. calm down the lieutenant who was uh, oh, very yeah. irate. <laughs> yes, so that will be taken care of. Okay. And the next question is going to be, what about if people do go find somewhere to park and come walking out? They That's will be advised. Saying. They will be advised, uh, and we we can have signs made up for that as well that say. If you park in an Ill, uh, illegal spot, your car is subject to be towed. Um, and, we'll, and I did that last year. Actually, I had a blow horn, um, and I walked our walking path at one time and said, if you park on a side street, you might want to go move it if it's being towed. And the amount of people that turned around and went and got their car was crazy. So the, that will again also be. That's yeah. why I was thinking if you had those, you know, how you have to either pay for your ticket or give your ticket before you yeah. actually get into the Yeah, they don't get the ticket until they're... If you 
tell them, hey, look, we are closed. So any yeah. Yahoo that comes walking up. We're going to address yeah. that right yeah. there on the spot. Okay, good. Will you allow walk-ins? Where they walk from? Here's the problem. That's, that's right? exactly where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. If you don't allow walk-ins, they won't be motivated to park illegally. Right. Right. So the, 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 the dilemma for that will be, and I think we, we did touch on it at the last meeting, what if, what if a neighbor from Perryville Road wants to walk across the street instead of drive? What if somebody from Golden Manor wants to walk in instead of driving? What if they, what if they, a friend, they parked at Golden Manor and they want to walk in? How, I don't know how we can stop that from happening, other than putting signs out there that say, if you parked on a side street or illegally, your vehicle is subject to be towed. I, I, I think if you were to ask the people in those areas, they would rather drive in and not have illegal parking. I wouldn't disagree with you. You'd be surprised how many people do walk in from Grover Manor that are residents, because I see them. Or is there a way, can, and I know I'm probably- I'm, I'm gonna keep parking on that. I know. <laughs> I know that's a, you guys got enough to do, but is there a way to just check the license? I mean, you know, just to say, okay. We'll, we'll try to figure out. We'll from true, truly from Grove Manor, then. To address what I think okay. we're doing, um, the addition of 40 professional parkers. Okay, we're trying to stick in the past 10 pounds of sausage in a five pound casing, yeah. right? Adding 40 professional parkers are gonna free up my deputies to do what they were originally intended to do. Last year, my deputies, myself included, spent hours directing traffic and parking these cars in an effort, a desperate effort to get them into those spots. Yeah. We are now gonna be able to do what we need to do, and that is police those areas, in my opinion. You know, okay. proof will be in the pudding, 2023, correct? Sure. But we should have the personnel to do that, because now we're not parking vehicles, which is never actually our job. Because <laughs> my, my big fear last year, and I mentioned this in the last meeting, we had people walking down Dixie in costume, in long dresses, mm -hmm. with children, running across four lanes. And that was before the show even ended. I can't imagine what it was like at night with people running back across there with all the cars exiting. Yeah. It was what was scary. You're 100% correct, and I was part of the yelling to get them off onto the shoulder. Uh, what we're running into there is that group parking pad that we can't, there's not a lot we can do there unless we partner with Groveland Manor, I suppose, and keep them out of there, but that's private property. And you got uh, Rotten Manor, which some of those people are doing double duty later in the year. They're going there, and then they're coming here or back and forth. And that's well, probably Rotten Manor is on the opposite side. And they're Where crossing, everybody has yes. Cross. No. Really. Absolutely. So hopefully, that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Hope is that everything we're doing will alleviate parking, illegal parking of cars. Parking where they shouldn't be. They should be parking on the side of the But as Sergeant Miller said, and I think I actually have it coming up, because the Sheriff's Office will be more readily available to go, they will be able to monitor. And if they see somebody walking, tell them, hey, where'd you park? Where are you coming from? And then direct them. We have a That's very plan. good, very good relationship with Byers Towing. Uh, Bucky Byers has been an outstanding partner with us for years, and he's well aware of this situation. So we have uh, some traffic adjustments. We're going to increase the amount of signage notifying patrons of the route and lanes to use when approaching the festival. Uh, some areas we cannot allow, we can't put the signage, unfortunately. Uh, I have checked with the Road Commission, uh, and, and Bob and I have had some conversations on signage. Uh, they just don't allow, like I would love to be able to put a big sign at Van and, and uh, Trip saying no festival traffic, but we can't. Um, so we will be putting more signage up and around where we can. Digital traffic signs again this year, we're gonna have two on I-75 in the same locations and we're gonna have two on Dixie Highway at those same locations. Again, they will be under my control. I will be able to change them to whatever wording um, I need to to let people know what we're doing. Um, we're also going to increase the amount of ground signs, the election type signs that you see, um, in hopes that people will stay on Dixie Highway, not take those alternative routes. But again, we go back to GPS and 
know, even a half a mile back up on Dixie Highway, a GPS is going to say, oh, there's a backup, you got to go get from it. We have looked into being able to block that somehow, but it just can't happen. It, it is what it is. And, and we're hoping that by using more signage, people will follow the signs and not their GPS. And that's almost crazy. I, it, I would be willing to bet that 90% of the people that are coming to our show have been to our show multiple times. They shouldn't need a GPS to get there. But if they're like my wife, she needs a GPS to go from my house to her mom's. So. <laughs> Excuse the road closed ahead. It was the only picture that I could find um, to show you what kind of signs we're going to be getting. T1 I 75, T1 Dixie. Festival has complete control over what the messages say. Signs will be utilized for weekend announcements <coughs> and traffic announcements. Or traffic updates, I'm sorry. State barricades, we've already signed an agreement with them. This is their invoice uh, for this year. And uh, Dave, I think this is what we were talking about when we were talking about the line. This is the Google map. When we put the lines in last year, they're still there. I did a, just recently did this Google map. And it's going to show you the, the demarcation of the lines that we're going to be marking in this year uh, for parking. Same thing in the south parking lot. The lines are already there for us. We just got to go fill them in again with some blue paint. Believe it or not, I've driven it. We still have blue lines out there. Uh, we are going to follow that plan again this year. Uh, we're also going to be doing um, some better with, with Ricky's input, which is great input. When we put our cones out, we're also going to uh, delineate, we're going to use caution tape. One of the problems that we found over the years too is people start pulling in, they just decide, I don't want to follow the herd, I'm going to park wherever I want. Yeah. So by, by using caution tape, cones, they're not going to be able to just turn wherever they want to go. They're going to have to go where we're telling them. And then once again, the increase in the amount of flaggers, point people, the parking staff itself is going to be huge. So just some little deterrence to stop people from messing up our parking lot. Internal signage. Uh, we started last year and we didn't get the job done like we wanted to, but this year it's gonna happen. We have created uh, a significant amount of signs for a better understanding of the patron that's coming in. We want them to know where they're going so they don't have to stop and ask questions. Better understanding of the exits handicap parking, motorcycle, and most of all, directions to I-75. Most people don't know that you can access I-75 in either direction from Dixie Highway. We know it because we live here, uh, but most people don't. Do you guys realize that I-75 is, I mean, they're being closed out? Yes, Mr. De Palma has kept me very well impressed <laughs> of the I-75 closures, and we appreciate that. I believe you get those same emails. I do. Um, uh, so that's been very helpful. These are the signs that we're going to be putting up um, inside festival, and some of them we can do outside. No parking, exit only, one-way traffic. Um, these are going to be placed all over the place so that we have better, uh, so people can understand where we need them to go and when we need to do it. And you can actually see it uh, back here on these maps where those signs are being placed. And also right here. This is the Queens lot, uh, inner signage, uh, no parking, the exit. Sheriff's Department standard operating procedures. You guys all have a copy of the standard operating procedure. That's really not changing this year, other than we've added in that they will follow the, the Michigan compiled uh, laws, the MCL codes. 257.602 is compliance with an order of direction of a police officer. That one, if no one wants to listen to them, when they tell them the lot is full, keep going, they cannot take action against that person. Also, for the impounding of an illegally parked vehicle, they're going to follow 257.606. That allows them to be able to notify buyers towing uh, that they need to have a vehicle towed from Dixie Highway, Perryville, Laring, Holdridge, within their proximity. Now, one of the things that uh, everybody also needs to realize, and I think I've mentioned this at previous meetings, the sheriff's office responsibility on festival days really is Laring Road to Groveland Manor, portion of Dixie Highway. The state police are supposed to be patrolling everything else. 
but we have the deputies that will be down Laring Road, will be watching Perryville Road. They're going to be in places and watching and making sure of it. So I read through the contract, including the uh, there's a kind of an addendum to that, a smaller portion that kind of specifies where the deputies will be stationed, where the sergeants, the lieutenants, the will SOPs, be. the SOPs. Okay. Um, that is, upon my reading, it does not provide for, um, you know, roving off-premises patrol, correct? Uh, so, and Sergeant, you spoke to that earlier, the fact that with the addition of elite, you would have additional manpower to be kind of, you know, investigating for parking violators. Is, we have two sergeants on uh, those heavy uh, days uh, post-holiday. Uh, uh, there's two sergeants that are assigned. Um, so generally what we'll do is send one out as a scout to take a look and see if there's an issue, but one maintains security inside the venue. And then we do have um, uh, those east, uh, or I'm sorry, those south and north lot um, uh, officers stationed for security purposes. Those can be pulled to do that too. That, that's under the idea that they're not gonna be gone all day, obviously, but to deal with parkers, they can identify the issue get the tow trucks going, we can pull a sergeant there, or uh, if somebody's on break, we can use that, utilize that as well. It is identified in the contract. It's in, it's in, we, general, it's in general terms. Number 15, the company freely and voluntarily consents to and agrees that it will CSO and all deputies while providing law enforcement services under the terms of this agreement shall have free and open access to any and all premises, areas, and locations it provides for it, but I was speaking more to the man the scheduling. Yeah, yeah, yeah scheduling there's, itself. Okay. There's, um, right. there's, a, there's a rover position in the north lot, and there's a rover position in the east lot. And that's what Sergeant Miller was just talking about. We can pull them out at any time. On a nice, easy day, that's their job. Go in and get that done. On a day when we feel that we might need to we have a little bit more of a heavier sheriff's presence on Dixie Highway, we can pull those guys plus the yeah. extra sergeant. And if we need to, I can actually take the lieutenant out of his location and put him out on uh, Dixie Highway as well. So what was the issue this year? So I recall, Last year. I'm sorry, 2022, thanks. Where we had vehicles parked illegally and the towing company was not allowed to tow yeah, them. Yeah, thank you. I am. And, and what's different this year that that won't happen again? So I, uh, I'm gonna, if, if Sergeant Miller knows the answer to that question, because I can tell you, I, I've only heard stories of what happened, and I'm not sure if there's any truths to that. I can just tell you that I did contact Bucky Byers on Monday because I was getting reports and I was seeing on Facebook, 26 cars were towed from the festival area, and I personally called Mr. Byers and I said, how many cars did you tow from the festival? Because I need to let the owner know. He goes, we didn't tow any cars from the festival. So how does that match the reality of what happened at the festival? I, I can tell you, I saw a half a mile of cars on Groveland Road, personally. Which, which I, when I don't you think about that in itself, is crazy because Groveland Road is so far away. And they were walking that distance down. So how can it be that since we don't allow off-site parking per the ordinance, that with all those cars out there, we didn't get any tow? I don't, I so, don't have the answer to that. And unfortunately, <coughs> that, was, that was the weekend that there I was, was not a, there. Is that is that is there any no parking signs posted on the road? I believe the issue was a state police sergeant showed up, and he's the one who made the determination that no cars were going to be towed. Yeah, I can't yeah. speak to that. I mean, that's what Bob said. So not, my, not, my not whole point is, off. what are we proposing different this year, so that doesn't happen again? So for us. We're going to be monitoring the local side streets to avoid parking of patrons and tow to the queue. Um, again, we're the sheriff's office will be driving and watching for those people that are walking and send them back. We'll, we'll put the signs out if you can't. You know, no parking on Grove and Road. That's that's a two mile walk. It is two it's miles. Not in Holly Township, is it? No, it's in Holly. It's in Holly Township. It's in Holly Township. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Chip. I spoke with Bob Palmer, perhaps. 
I, I just have an opinion here. He will, he will be very insightful. He is aware of what happened. I think it was the issue of authority. He, right. he thought he had the, there was confusion over who yep. had the authority right. to direct the tow truck to do the actual towing. And it was confusing. It was confusing. And as a result, it resulted in no one being towed. But I think if Bob were here, and I don't mean to speak for him, but right. I think if he were here, he would be adamant about giving you assurance that you would have the authority, uh, they would implement a towing process, and you would be comfortable doing so. That's why I'm asking you the question. Yeah. What changes have we made? That would be the change. So we don't have that yeah. issue again. And right. that's where I keep coming back yeah. to walk-ins. If you don't the allow walk-ins, you don't have the problem. The confusion would not be authority issue. Yeah. That would be straight. For, for, for the few people that live close by, I would rather have them mad at us for not allowing them to walk in then have this problem. Well, hopefully in the big scheme of the plan, you're not gonna have any walk in. But I, will, I will come up, we'll have a plan for that. I'm gonna, Jackie, do you have a We spoke to the well? drivers of the tow truck. They didn't have the manpower. They didn't have the staff on the weekend. Get them out there and tow trucks. That's what we heard from them. Okay. Well, I can tell you, I've spoken to Mr. Byers and he will provide whatever we need. And if we have to, well, I can, I can reach out to Trevino phone here. She's right here in the right off of uh, Baldwin Road and get more tow trucks out there. I mean, I'm really hoping that the plan this year won't, this won't happen. We're not gonna have. Are we gonna have the no parking signage? They're already on Learning Road and Perry Road. Uh, Perry Road. Okay. Yeah, they left them off. I contacted Alex. I contacted Alex from the Road Commission. And they, those are there, aren't they? Yep, okay. What about our cover? Are they in trees? I don't think there was a cover. Yeah. Thank you for letting me know. Yes. I will contact yes. Alex. Because it's so far away, you didn't expect it to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah, so Groveland Road is in Holly Township. Yeah. Is it, no. is it Grand Blake? No, it's, it's, it's going to be. No, I think it's still Groveland. I think we're in Holly by then. I think it's Holly. We're past the fastener factory. factory. Yeah. Yeah. I just live a little bit further down. A little further down. So we'll, we'll see what we can do on that. Yeah, I mean, that may be a good yeah. idea. <clears throat> and obviously the Sheriff's Office and the festival is gonna follow the council ordinance mm -hmm. that you, you guys have set forth for us. Uh, there's the agreement from Mr. Byer. Um, it was actually on a better letterhead, but put it on the uh, uh, PowerPoint. It was a little difficult for me. Uh, someone else could have done it for me, but this is his wording. Uh, and he fully supports coming out and give us an email. Community relations. This is our... Uh, our young ladies here in the, in the back row and some others. Uh, those who live within close proximity, once again, we will be given the highly visible uh, window flag for the sheriff's office and for us to know who they are. Um, this is last year's version. I do believe we're looking to uh, make, maybe make a change, uh, but this did work and was very effective, and we're gonna be doing it again this year. You want us to keep ours? Or if you already have it. Again, you know, those are uh, one of the things we want to try to do help with the, with the uh, community. Uh, Festival is going to create a database um, of all the residents who reside on those secondary roads. We want to keep an open line of communication and address any concerns they may have. This, this is huge for them. We, we do feel for you, um, and we want to make sure that. Every resident is able to get a hold of somebody um, to say, hey, Chip, uh, we have an issue. And then I will address that issue if it means getting a hold of the sheriff's office or the state police to go down Perry Road Road and look at what's going on, and that's what's gonna happen. I'm here every day. Um, so I, I have, I think I have both of your numbers already. Yeah, because I don't have that Yeah, um, I do have a list of some of the residents on, on Perryville. Hopefully I can get the rest and we'll, we'll start that open line of communication. But what we'd really like to try and do is not have you guys inundated with the phone calls on Monday. I would rather take those phone calls so that you don't have to worry about them, so that Bob doesn't have to worry about them. I'm sure Bob would like that idea too. You just want to tell them. I don't blame you. <laughs> There's a plan. So 2022. We did have some positive takeaways from 2022. The south parking lot exit on the southbound BC Highway, as I said earlier, was phenomenal. That was probably one of the best things we've done in a very long time to help facilitate traffic. 
The digital signs, we've talked about it, we're going to continue that process. Uh, the use of seasonal signs in conjunction with the road commission, we just talked about it, they're on Ferry Road and Marin Road. Parking lot will again have highly visible lanes, blue in color, uh, to ensure proper spacing of vehicles in the parking lot in compliance with Golden Township Ordinance. Uh, it's very well spelled out right in your ordinance on how wide they have to be, what the capacity is, so uh, we're going to continue doing that. And once again, the highly visible uh, VIP Township resident flag. Township communication. The designated festival representative me, uh, will meet Tuesday at 4 p.m. with Township Supervisor Bob Palm or his designated Township representative, Ty Daniel, uh, to discuss the previous weekend. What do we do right? What do we do wrong? Where can we improve? And how are things going? That's going to be key for us. Communication is going to be key for us this year, whether it's the planning commission, the township, the residents. Um, without that communication, we won't know where to fix things and how to improve things. The festival will also provide Groveland Township with a daily attendance um, after each weekend. So I, I'd love to tell you that on Monday I'm going to have the attendance for you, but sometimes it does take a little bit longer. So uh, no later than Tuesday by 4 o'clock with that meeting with Bob, you will know what our attendance was for the weekend. The Michigan Renaissance Festival Performance Guarantee. The Michigan Renaissance Festival is confident with the extensive and comprehensive measures we've taken in 2023 that the Renaissance Festival will result in a significant improvement in both the traffic flow and the efficiency of parking vehicles compared to the 2022 season. The Michigan Renaissance Festival herewith makes the following performance guarantees to Groveland Township. One, every component of the traffic plan submitted to the Planning Commission of Groveland Township will be followed in all material aspects. Two, Groveland Township in their sole discretion will determine whether or not traffic and parking operated better in 2023 and provide the Michigan Renaissance Festival with its findings. If the determination is made that the traffic and parking did not improve, Michigan Renaissance Festival will engage in the services of a third party professional firm acceptable to Groveland Township to prepare and distribute a comprehensive traffic management plan. MRF will refer and retain the firm within 45 days of being notified by Groveland Township of any negative. And third, and most importantly, I believe this cover some of the questions from the commission in the past as to what can happen if you don't comply. The Michigan Renaissance Festival will pay $300 a, a day, or $300 fee in the amount consistent with your ordinance for each event day that the Roland Township, that Roland Township in its sole discretion determines that the Michigan Renaissance Festival is not compliant with the promises made here. Where's the $300 amount? Yeah, it's in your ordinance. It's in the ordinance. That's in uh, a parking ordinance for some vehicles. Uh, I think we believed it to be. So in the seasonal festival? The fee assigned. Uh, I've got it right here. I can read it. Uh, well, I'll back up a little bit. The, um, the section that's in. Is it in the last paragraph of the last page? It talks about. Um, Section, I'm, I'm going to just highlight section 29 township board shall enforce parking and traffic control section 30 vehicle subject uh, being immediately removed from public or private property is the expense of the registered owner um, and 32 a violation of this section is a civil infraction a person determined to be responsible uh, for a violation of this section may be ordered to pay a civil fine of not more than three hundred dollars plus cost plus penalties as may be authorized by law or ordinance plus any cost of towing storage and redemption of vehicle so this, an individual not this is this is the maximum amount you can charge someone when you tow their vehicle right. it has nothing to do with the festival a performance guarantee. yeah i, I, I would agree based on what well, danielle and i read that differently that's that's not how me as the zoning administrator interprets it <coughs> well, because my understanding. I, I need the whole thing. Cause it, well, I've, I've only printed out two pages. I go back to section 28. 
Licenses, permits, miscellaneous business regulations, outdoor assemblies, revocation, section 26-122. The township may revoke a license whenever the licensee, his employees, or agents fail or neglect or refuse to comply with any or all provisions, regulations, ordinances, statutes, or other laws incorporated in this article by reference. So that's the penalty, not, not $300. Well, if, if I may, excellent point. It's actually something I had also noted. Um, I would suggest that we kind of come back um, and, and address questions and concerns um, substantively after you've completed your presentation. Sure. Um, and that's a good one. So if you go ahead and finish. So 2024 ranks on something. If 2023 is successful, festival will, will Reevaluate, make any changes to ensure an even better 2024 festival season. Obviously, that is, we've had no problems. The season went well. Maybe some hiccups along the way, but we can move forward. Um, the second part of that is, if Grove and Thompson feels the 2023 season was a failure, then the festival will retain their respectable traffic engineering firm, and, and this is going to be my fault. I should have changed it within 45 days of notice to conduct the traffic management plan because we have found. Trying to get a traffic management company is not that easy. Um, as you all are all aware uh, from the last meeting, we were going to be reached out to Fishback to do this management plan for us twice. Um, they contacted the township, their bosses, and they said, no, we can't do it for you. We then uh, advised them that we would not hold them liable for anything that should occur. They went back to their bosses and came back to us again and said, no, we cannot put a traffic management plan together for you. Uh, they gave us a name of a company, and I can tell you I have made five personal phone calls to that company with no response. So trying to uh, find a traffic management engineering company on short term uh, did not work. So that's why we're going to ask for 45 days. If so, decided by the township that we need to have one. If things didn't go well this year, like we're, we're hoping, then we'll concede and uh, if we have 45 days to get a traffic management plan for you. And I do believe that is the minimum. Okay, okay Chip, thank you. Um, very much appreciated. Uh, I guess just there was a couple, couple things you held back that Maybe a little bit of a surprise that we're, we're not in the in the packet for tonight. Um, good, nothing that was a bad surprise. All very encouraging, at least as far as I'm concerned. Um, I'd like to return. Well, I don't know. I guess I would invite Pat to come. We do have an agenda uh, to the extent possible. It's 8:30, so I'd like to stick to that and proceed through the discussion. But you told us a lot. Um, do you guys want to stick to the uh, the agenda to guide the discussion, or do you just want to kind of offer up questions on an individual basis, uh, you know, kind of train of thought? Any, any? Well, for the overview, I would like for new business. There's something I want to request. Okay, I would invite you to do so. On your third page, it says new for 23. The very bottom one says, if the festival gates do get closed, there will be signage placed on Dixie Highway indicating the festival is closed for the day due to capacity. Closed for the day. Then later on in your stuff, you say over here, number 10, the protocol will continue until the parking lot has been cleared enough to safely allow parking to resume. Which crap are we doing? Are we gonna, if you close it, is it closed and nobody can come in? for the day, or are you gonna say, well, you know, maybe in a half hour or hour, we can open it up. Well, so we have to remember also this, Louie. Uh, if we can carefully and safely get traffic moved on Dixie Highway, if we're not sitting still on Dixie Highway and clear it up, and also have evacuated, not to say evacuated, exited, <laughs> we've had 
a numerous amount of people leave that we can now reopen the gates safely, then I, I really don't foresee an issue with reopening the gates safely to allow people to come back in. I come by and I see that you're closed. And I say, okay, I'll go get lunch and then I'll come back and see if you're back open. Is that what you're telling me? Because, you know, I'm driving by and I'm gonna get, if I go on a Friday, I'm gonna get there very early. But if I come by at 12 o'clock and I see it's closed, okay, I can go somewhere and come back or will I assume this, it's closed mm -hmm. in the day? I would say if you go by at noon and the gates are closed, those gates are probably gonna stay closed for a good, very good portion of the day. So that means we are at full capacity within two hours, that's a busy day. Now, to add to your, to, to answer that question, uh, if you went into Holly and had lunch, you were gone for a couple of hours, in that two hour window, we may have been able to get traffic off the gate have people leaving and it is now safe to allow patrons to start coming and so back. you're going to change all the yeah. signs we'll, we'll, we'll allow patrons to start coming back okay. but so only if it's safe we don't okay. want so this one yeah. close to the day is that not we, when we put that together for the permit a month ago and then started reevaluating what we should do is we're at that point now so but only if it's safe we're not just going to Hey, we had the gates closed for half an hour and we need to open it back up. It's not going to be that way. Trust me, it's not. We're, it's going to be a conversation. Myself, Richie, whoever my command officer is, hopefully Sergeant Miller. And then it's even going to be a phone call to Mr. Peterson um, and explain the situation to him. It's not just going to be, the gates have been closed for half an hour. People should be leaving now. We're going to open the gates. Only if it's safe. That's the whole key thing here, right? So you're going to keep an eye on the Absolutely. exit number. We'll watch the exit numbers. We're going to watch the traffic on Dixie Highway. The main thing is the clear Dixie right. Highway. I hope that answers your question. Thank you, sir. So I kind of had a, a rethinking just while you were asking that question. Of, uh, just because, Chip, you had a, a kind of a presentation that fits within the agenda, um, why, don't, why don't we entertain questions? Um, Neil, the performance guarantee is an agenda item at the end, so we'll kind of defer on that for now. Sure. But just with regard to what uh, Chip had uh, to say during his presentation, I guess <coughs> I would, you know, if anyone has specific questions, I'll start um, <laughs> if I if I may. Um, elite parking, Mr. Avo. Um, personally, I'm enthused that you're on board because I've always envisioned this being kind of a very delicate house of cards, starting at the bottom, on-prem, in the lot. So to know that, you know, your, your company's been involved, you got experience in these areas, I'm, I'm very encouraged to hear that. That being said, is there an agreement between the yes. elite and the festival as of today? Yes, sir. Okay, a signed agreement? Yes, sir. Okay, is that something that would be shared with the, uh, the planning commission? Am I allowed to ask for that just so we can uh, have a gander at the terms and conditions as I, I would be the, the township as I would, a third party I, I would respectfully ask that I uh, contact our attorney to ask him that question because there are some financials in there. Well, yeah, we can give you a well, we can, we'll, if, you, if you want to see the terms and conditions specifically as they relate to performance. Correct. Thank you. Yes. We can do that. With regard to contingency yes. within the relationship between right. you know the festival yeah. and its vendor. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Or I can defer to the owner. It's even better. I do agree. Go right ahead. Um, we talk about the new parking configuration proposed, um, being able to keep three miles of cars queued inside the facility. Has that been done? Is it planned on being done? Is it a maybe? When would it be done? I've Those driven it myself. So it is done, it is in place? Yes. Okay. Wait, 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 be clear. The, the, the roadways are being done, but there's a refinement process that is yet to take place. So we actually are contracting an excavator, and he's gonna come in, he's gonna go through and make our new roads My, instead of it just being. It's Mike Ryan. He's the same gentleman who did our exit. 
but he's going to go through a designated area of the lots and grade it out so that there's a, it's a designated road so that cars know where they're going. Yeah. So would that be in place by the opening of the festival? It is, yes. Yeah, so Thank exactly. you. That answers my question. And, and will that, further to Neil's question, will that be weather, um, irregardless of weather? In, in other words, are you going to have some substrate on this excavation Might to ensure that care. despite the weather, it's not going to become unusable? No, it won't be unusable. It's still in the access to uh, violence to the is resourceful. So if we get the worst weather that we've ever experienced in the history of the We're not going to have to worry about traffic. The road will be open. No one will show up. <laughs> <laughs> um, just with regard to the parking for a fee, which is new to me. Um, new to us. Yeah. How is that going to be, uh, I guess, practically achieved again in so real time? The, the plan is in my mind right now, because I'm the one working this dog, is I'm going to attempt to hire, I will hire a, uh, a group or an organization of uh, shooting for above 18 and over. And my, the way I see it in my mind, and, and Jim and I will probably sit down and, and talk about this with Richie as well, because he's gonna be the parking guy, right? So what I foresee as the plan would be, um, if I'm Richie's guy of parking cars and I'm telling this car parked here, this car parked here, I got three people standing behind me that are waiting for this car to get out. That person's gonna go up, hey, do you have your parking voucher? I'll show you $10. And they're gonna, <coughs> now these cars are gonna get parked and they're just gonna follow, kind of like a leapfrog uh, behind them. That's, that's what I'm envisioning in my head right now. I could refine that to come up with some different type of a solution for that. But the key is, in all of it, is getting that car parked. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be the important part. Do you part. have signage for coming in so that people are aware that they're going to be charged? We will, yes. Yeah. So there will be signage saying, Thank you, sir. Yeah. So these people are going to be collecting money? Yes. Credit card, cash. Um, we're also going to, excuse me, um, all of our social media will also have it. Um, when they go to buy a ticket, they'll, they should also be able to see that um, they have to also get a big get a parking voucher when they're buying their ticket. If you're going to have prepaid parking, yes. What happens if you close the festival? Do you have a process to refund that prepaid parking? They can call us. They'll be able to call us because I'll know. They'll have uh, our parking staff will have scanners, and they'll be able to scan the voucher. So I'll know which vouchers have been right. collected and which ones have it. And if somebody calls me and says, "I couldn't come into your site today because your lot was closed," then. So there's specific days. No, they, they, they'll be good for any day. So they okay. can use it another. They can use it another day. If we close on Saturday, they can use it Sunday. Chip, was your presentation specifically the on-prem parking? Um, I don't know. I guess the, the process that you laid out was that um, kind of drafted in consultation with Mr. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So uh, Richie and I have become very good friends. <laughs> uh, we speak every day. We have met uh, multiple times, and you know, we, when, when we were interviewing companies, one of the things that I did back in February, March, uh, was I met with them on site. We drove the site. Um, I think it was you that said it looks a lot different without a foot of snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so we. And I explained to them how we used to park it. And then we went in and sat down. And have you or has the festival made him privy to attendance counts mm -hmm. and the traffic? Yeah, we talked about it all the time. road performed. Talk about all of that. Yeah. Okay. And Mr. Abel, obviously, I'm assuming everything that was presented to us tonight is conceivable and deployable and possible in your professional experience. Yes. <coughs> Jim, did you have a question? I was actually including myself. <laughs> so the nice part, Jeff, is it's a win-win for both of us, right? I'm not, we're not going to keep it for him if he doesn't want. He wins, we win. Right? He being Richie. 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 Yeah. The parking lot win. They get everything done. They, they, they do the things that we're supposed to. Then we win. It's, it's, uh, and that's what we're here for, right? We want to have a successful, because 
I don't want to be here next year looking at you and explaining what we've had to do with him. So everything we're doing today and we've been working on since I've been, you know, I've been with the last couple of plant commission meetings, you guys know, and I just want to apologize for what took place last year. Um, we've been nonstop. I have spent many an hour, uh, my doctor put me in high blood pressure medicine, uh, uh, which was not called for, but uh, many an hour every day looking at this, this load management, mm -hmm. working with Richie and Mr. Peterson. This, I, I truly believe. And I hope that at the end of the year, I can look at all of you and you can look at me and say, wow, we had a great, great year. And that, that's not to say we're not gonna have some hiccups, right? There's always gonna be uh, a hiccup. We could have, you know, we, we have the I-75 uh, construction. We don't know what impact that's gonna have on, on JC Highway traffic. I don't think it's gonna be, doesn't look like it's gonna be that much. I think we won't know until Practical days that's saying, yeah, which is great. So, we know when they're saying something other than a closing of bridge for yeah. a day. Um, and I would hope that you talk to the project engineer on those memos so that which when you've got a busy weekend plan, you see if maybe he could, if it is something significant, right. he could move it for that. That's why I give it to you as soon as I can. Yeah, no, I, I do appreciate it. Though. Is the northbound or southbound? Over the next four years, they're going to fix every bridge, pothole, rut, and divert all of the traffic on the one side of the freeway at some point in time, fix the other side, and then divert it all back over onto the other side and fix the opposite lane. So, which one's going to be done first? Is I, I don't know. I get, I get, uh, I've had three, I think, so far in, week, yeah. in this week of here's the next closure we're working on. So, as soon as I get them, I send them to Jeff so you guys have it if you need it. And I send it to Chip. So the intent is get to the engineer if something he's doing in the next week seems like it would interfere in a big way with what you're doing and see if you can get him to adjust it. Because uh, I still haven't seen a project for the whole thing. I found out only because my foreman, my garage foreman, said, I think they're working on I 75. I found out a couple of weeks. And I said, Really? <laughs> That's how I got the information. Or I wouldn't have even known. And, that, and last time they had the problem with Dixie was because they closed I-75 down and repaid a bunch of it, diverted all the traffic to Dixie. That was the absolute worst year we ever had. And I didn't know a thing about it until after it was done. So at least this time, MCOT's given us a heads up. So just, I guess, one final question I had on the topic of communication, which is vitally important. And it's good to hear that that's a focal point of festival for this coming season. Um, could you speak to the ability of the residents to contact an authorized representative of the festival directly instead of blowing up Bob's phone Absolutely. or Neil's phone or anybody on this commission? They have my number. Okay. They're my phone. Uh, <laughs> <sorry. laughs> and we will send out through the mail or if, if we need you, we'll go door to door seems to me that the folks that qualify, not to interrupt you, Chuck, no, you're good. but it seems to me the folks that qualify for a flag should also qualify for a business card. So yeah. if they come to the office and they yeah. need to get a flag, uh, that's one of the point of contacts for us, right? We can now get a, a name, an address, an email address, a phone number, and I will go in and create that database, and they can also hand that person either <coughs> my personal number, which I they can call. I, I have no problem with that. Or they can call the office, and then the office can give them my number or divert them to me. Um, I'm more than happy to take that. And, and that would seem to be so logical because it alleviates some of the burden on the deputies or the sergeants, as Sergeant Absolutely. Miller indicated, to be leaving the tower to go doing GI work around the perimeter, right? The key is the phone calls won't come to pop. <laughs> good, good key. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> one thing. And he 
left. He had to I get, know. He, he left. had to get uh, but, the, the training. But it's more of a question for so the sheriff's and, office and you. Yep. So if they can't come through, for oh. one reason or another, they can't come through. And they're there, sure. There's no. There's no debating that. And that's oh, what he would have told you. Um, that there is going to be. So the sheriff's office has forced overtime. Okay. So if there's an opening at the Renaissance Festival, hey Jim, I know you're working over the township midnights. You're now working the Renaissance Festival during the day tomorrow. Okay. Um, there is no. There. That's the contingency. We will never. The only time we will have an empty deputy's position is if somebody comes to me and says, hey, the weather doesn't look that great today. And your okay. traffic is slow coming in. Do we really need to fill that spot? Right. And I can say yes or no um, at that point in time. So their plan is that schedule is always full. You okay. will never. Now they might send, they'll send me that schedule on a Friday afternoon, and I look at it and I go, oh, there's three spots to fill. But I know Saturday morning It'll I'm going to see three deputies there because we it's in our contract. It's in our okay. it's in our share. We'll put the other hat on in my sheriff's department contract or where I work. I can be forced. I, there's there's been times where I've called Jim on a Friday night for opening day, going, um, I may not be able to work festival for you tomorrow because I'm going to be staying on Dixie Highway directing traffic. And if they get to me, then you know, it's 23 years as been a fire investigator who's not even on the road patrol anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that's bad. That's a bad day. So yeah. those spots get filled. Okay. So again, it's not here in the contract, but. Yes. Because it gives them the ability to, yeah. you it's, know, they're, they're not tied to having, for the contract, they're not tied to right. having that minimum numbers. Yeah, no, they, they don't get minimums. They have the time to come back okay. and fill every spot. He's okay. reiterating something that we have been told year after year after yeah. year after year after year after year. So he is very, very right. No okay. matter what, they might not want to sure. work, but they <laughs> have to. Because it, it, it doesn't say that the contract well, says something. They would not be sending you anything until it was paid. Right. Does it say that on there? Yes. It does. Yes, it does. Very deeply within the 135 pages of the <laughs> materials, we all caught that one sentence that said the bill has not been paid. I, I, I will thank you for bringing that to my attention. We come to work. Let me tell you. We guys need some And the other thing, I'm not trying to create work for Danielle, but if we are having to notify all of the residents around for the next meeting, 300 feet, 300 feet within the property line. Of the Can we provide right? that information to him to create, start to create his database of all of his neighbors, so that he knows who? Because you're you're already gathered. I don't know with HIPAA. Well, the crazy part is there's not many houses within 300 feet no, of the festival no. ground. <laughs> it's it's really right. It's only it's the crazy. people that surround the festival. It's kind of a crossroads. And there's probably yeah, right. maybe Absolutely. four. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. And you know. <laughs> but I can. You're more than welcome to that information. Okay. That's a great observation, Jenny. I agree with you. I mean, if you already has the data, yeah. the information, share it I really to help the, wheel. the database. Yeah. So you had a second? Or was that that was my second. Okay. Two, two just quick comments. Uh, the complimentary tickets, moving them to the first four weeks. Obvious question, are we moving the problem? You know, if we're taking 25,000 tickets and now moving into September 10th, will those people wait to the last minute? Just making a comment, obviously you're gonna be prepared. We're gonna be prepared. And my, my, my personal gut feeling tells me that we're gonna see an increase. It's just how much of an increase are we gonna see this first year? Because again, 
statistically in my own thought, it, it, as I explained earlier in the meeting, I believe people already planned those first four weekends and it's not the right time. Okay. Now this year it might be, they might say, hey, I gotta get this ticket used or why would I even get it? Um, so I do believe we're gonna see some influx. We're gonna prepare ourselves for an influx. Um, Richie and I have already talked about um, the possibilities if I start looking at them. And, and honestly, it, it may be my fault over the last few years. This year I'm gonna be paying special attention to the numbers that you see in front of you for the attendance and what I'm getting, you know, opening weekend that I see a 10% increase in the comp ticket usage. Mm -hmm. it, they are like they are weekends. Weekends. They are like weekends, but the, the plan will be to look at the trend, right? Are we gonna see uh, an uptick? Did I get a 10% increase on opening weekend? Another 10, 15% on the second weekend? So what does that tell me come Labor Day weekend? Am I gonna see a higher uptick? I may have to say, Hey Richie, I'm looking at the attendance. We may want to add a couple extra. Uh, and the weather. weather. Then the weather is going to be the sure. thing there too. And then we'll just I, I I know now looking at the attendance what my daily average is, and we're going to make those accommodations to adjust. We might, we might have to even bring in an extra beverage. We did it last year. The opening weekends we brought in extra beverage. You know, we staggered. We we shifted their times. Um, they normally would start at nine. We brought in beverages at eight o'clock. To help get traffic going and facilitate it. And we may, you know, we're, that's going to be the nice part. We're going to work with Richie. Richie's going to work with us. We're going to, we're going to make some adjustments as needed. And we can both know looking at, it, you know, another uh, Facebook surprising me. We start noticing on social media, we're like, hey, this weekend at festival is going to be this. And people just start boom, 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 boom. That might be something we want to look at. We say, hey, sir, I believe we've got the potential to have uh, more people this weekend. So, stock up in some extra bodies. I, I truly believe the key really is, it's gonna be him and it's gonna be him and parking. And the way that we're bringing cars in off the busy highway. Um, it's well, I, I think that's what I was gonna say is regardless, if you see that up or not, I mean, to me the key thing was rerouting your, uh, addressing the problem with your parking. You know, you know, the root of the problem. And you got three, and now you've got three plans. You got plan A, plan B, plan C, depending on, on your your uh, yeah, your traffic coming in. So I think that that'll make the difference. It would be a good idea um, because you have road engineering out and do the traffic study and evaluating what your flow rate was for your different entrance points based on the old plan in terms of the old flow plan within the parking area it would be a good idea to get rolled back in not necessarily on your slow weekend but on your weekends where you know you're going to have more uh and give us a traffic and re yeah go through the recalculation to see what your percent increase right yeah right um, yes. Can I grab one more? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I appreciate the answer. Um, we just talked about uh, people within 300 feet of the Ren Fest, very few. Um, people are coming in, uh, neighborhood people get flags for easy transportation. They're going to be in seeing you to get those business cards and whatnot. If you gave them a free parking pass, they wouldn't have to walk in. And they would be able to drive right in and be close. I'm just trying to kill this walk-in no, problem. I know you are. <laughs> you know, I, I want everybody to get in, park close, walk in, have a great day. You're exhausted. You get in your car, even if you're just going back out. We've got a great parking plan coming. I'm just great throwing idea. that out. Thank you. Because you're going to have to get a lot of good parking. I have been to venues that charge parking. I'm looking at an alternate. Okay, parking somewhere further. I'll walk. No, it's a great idea. Thank you. Didn't think about that. You want to kind of write that down? <laughs> <laughs> I'll remind him. I know will remind me. Jim? <laughs> Chip, I've got a couple of questions. Um, what do you think you're going to charge for parking? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Okay. Do you envision when somebody comes in and you kind of already got them captive that somebody might want to drive out? 
Okay. To sure. turn around and go out yeah. instead of paying $10. Yeah. Uh, you, I, surprisingly, uh, I have numerous, again, for the office parking on cars, I've had numerous people go out and say, how much is it to park? Uh, yeah. So I think people, I think people expect it. Um, Do you other Renaissance festivals charge parking? Uh, yeah, some of them. Yeah, some of them actually do. Some of them charge a lot. Oh, no. That crater golden circle. And North Carolina, yeah. 35 down. Historically, we've been able to do it. Whereabouts in North Carolina? I don't know where it's at. Yeah. yeah. It's just wrong. Raleigh. Raleigh, Morgan, Castor, yeah. Church, and 25. North Carolina yeah. State. Yeah. You figure, well, you know, most, <laughs> most Michiganders, <laughs> we're used to going down to Detroit to the Tiger, the Lions, the Reds. Yeah. 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 I mean, I paid yeah. 20 bucks the other night to go watch the Tigers, yeah. but they won, so I look forward to it. I mean, I, I do believe Michiganders are used to paying. This is going to be something new for them, but like I said, we're going to market it. We're going to hit our social media. People will be prepared. We're going to have signs. Um, that could be, uh, you know, Jim and I haven't talked about what we're going to put on those digital signs. We usually just put, you know, week one, uh, huzzah, or whatever, and then if we have to change it for other things, because maybe one of the things we can put on there is, uh, but social media will definitely be hit hard. Um, we're also seeing just uh, it does run the box office as well. I, I think we're seeing a uh, increase of online ticket purchasing versus coming to the box office nowadays. And because they're buying those tickets online, they're going to see yeah. Yeah. that parking voucher right there when they're buying their online ticket. Um, so I, I, I foresee that not being. Jim, did that answer your question? Yeah, oh, I have others. Did it answer you? Did it answer yeah, no, 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 I agree. Then continue. What, what was it? FYI, the website still says free parking. Well, oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll take that. Um, how many humans were parking cars in the past? I'm sorry? How many people were parking cars in the past? <laughs> uh, I'll give you an honest answer. Uh, last year, we may have peaked at 12 or 15. Okay. It was terrible. I'm not gonna lie. You're set now. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> okay. So, um, from what I can tell from LinkedIn, Haley has 11 years' experience. Does she have any parallel parking planning, whatever the heck she just provided for you folks? I would have to ask her. Um, she was um, Leanne, who used to be our mm -hmm. rep, uh, moved up in the company. So she picked Haley and Dylan and Jesse to be our. Um, I would hope. I would hope she picked somebody that. I got it. Just looking for every possibility. Said this is a win-win. Um, not. Hang on, you guys. I'm just curious. What considerations in the future do you have for any emergency, like active shooter, metal detectors, things along those lines? So we do have an we do have an emergency plan. I have to go find that. Um, I believe you guys got a little. Uh, you you received our emergency. Oh, that I don't know. We maybe the township has it, um, and I'm not. <laughs> but we do have an emergency plan for, for an all for like a, a shooter, a shooter uh, tornadoes, uh, fire. <coughs> um, did you file that with Holly this week? Holly filed it with you as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm maybe maybe I, don't, I don't remember. Because that's what the festival itself falls yeah. in the Holly Township. But let me check on that for you. I just would like to see it. Yeah, I know there's that, nothing um, else we can do with copy of Kevin. So, yeah, yeah and, and I do know we do have a plan. Uh, part of that plan is I have uh, public relations or costume security that used to be. Um, they're all assigned emergency gates. And that's their, that is their, they watch their area, but they're all assigned an emergency gate. If we have to open those gates in case of an emergency, that is their number one priority. And actually one of them is assigned to first aid uh, to exit that. The sheriff's office has a, a plan to also just get people in an active shooter, God forbid. Um, That's a uh, you're absolutely yeah, correct. The only, the, the, only the only diversion that we have is that patrons know that we do have law enforcement on, on 
hindsight, and that seems to, I think when you have that, and granted we do know school shootings happen and they're supposed to be school resource officers, but that's one diversity. Metal detectors, uh, <laughs> I'll answer that question for you again. If we put metal detectors up, every person that walks through <laughs> the metal detector would get blown off because they're wearing all this garb. Um, we do post no weapons allowed uh, other than Renaissance, right? We don't allow handguns on festival grounds. We just brought swords. swords. Um, and swords and, and knives and things that are tied down. They actually have to stop one of my public relations people. We have a weapons checking booth and they check and make sure that all of their stuff is tied down and not able to be pulled out during the festival. Uh, we also have a policy in place that if somebody does pull that weapon out during the festival and it's observed by myself or any of my staff, it's taken from them and they don't get it back. Um, I have taken many, many, many swords and knives from people. Um, we don't even allow law enforcement personnel to come on the festival carrying a weapon. I have been in many arguments with the FBI or a DE agent or an ATF agent who's in Texas, who's in Michigan, demanding that we allow to carry his firearm. We are a fighter pocket agency that we can make that determination that we can't carry it. Chip, you're the gatekeeper of this whole thing. What happens if your high blood pressure gets to you? <laughs> <laughs> and you don't uh, come in. Jim, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys a little personal story on that. I've been married three times, and my second wife, um, uh, we, she was pregnant, and she was due in August. My daughter was born August 19th. I went to festival, that was a Thursday. She was discharged Saturday morning. I went to St. Joe's Hospital. I went to festival, I opened up the festival. I drove to St. Joe's Hospital. I picked up my wife at the time, and my daughter. Went through the land use drive in the parking lot, brought her home. I sat there for about a half an hour and I said I gotta get back to work. <laughs> you can go ask my wife right now why she divorced me. She will tell you. <laughs> she should have ran back then instead of waiting 14 years because I have never missed a day in 30 years of running on festival. In here, in Florida, St. Louis, and Kansas City when I was doing Kansas City shows. So Hopefully. So we will trust you to have somebody who knows <laughs> what the first reason is. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my, well, and, and when I'm there, the past couple of years, not last year, but I also did the St. Louis show, like I said. And St. Louis runs kind of the same time as Michigan. Uh, my wife actually steps in and covers my role in Michigan, and she's worse than me. Uh, <laughs> she's, Jim's better. She, she's a bulldog. So. With everything put in place, though, how are you going to be everywhere? Uh, you, well, so that's well, that's, a, that's a good question, and I have an answer for that. I was running in the parking lot last year from the parking lot. Um, my wife handled all of the inner stuff that I deal with, and I have managers and supervisors who are able to handle everything for me. So my my whole thing last year was the parking lot, um, and so. The only time that it does become somewhat of an issue is if I'm on call and I get called in to work for it. But I have people that I can count on and, and take good. care of those things. So. All right, thank you. Chip, I'm good. That answers your question. Thank you, Jim. Um, Lynn? Can you go to the office on Dixie Highway and get the parking? I want you to go to the office. All right, pay, pay the 10 bucks yes, to get the parking. Okay, thank you. And I only want mine to say Friday. For you, you're not paying for parking. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my question the folks with the costume and carrying tickets does that include building ticket or will no, no, is that going to state that on the ticket or you'll have to pay for parking will that state that on the ticket they'll be told that when we're getting all that oh okay okay i was just wondering so a lot of our a lot of our complimentary tickets are used for media and right. trade okay. so when they get their tickets they usually get a letter from us as well specifically stating what these tickets are for so we'll make sure that we put in there and keep the last day of parking and have these tickets are only good for okay. the next day. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions from my fellow commission members? No. I guess
guess at this point, I would invite questions from the residents who are here. If you have any concerns or thoughts to offer to Mr. Schultz, Mr. Peterson, or you know the, the folks here on behalf of the festival. somebody's going to show up who's, who's got one of these lovely complimentary tickets and who's going to show up the last week and say, I want to use my ticket after he's parked and waited in line and yada, yada, yada. So for some reason he thinks that you'll let, are you going to let him in? So here's, here is a, a, a slight dilemma to yes, our right. process. Right. We don't know what that person ticket-wise has when they're driving in. I would say if it's a uh, not so busy of a day, then we would take that ticket. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it would be me. Well, and just thank you for the question, Sue. And um, I think just having the rule, the policy, the procedure in place, there's always going to be that deviation factor, right? <coughs> that it kind of has to rest within the realm of acceptability at some point. You gotta try, right? How do you how do you eat a dinosaur, you know, one bite at a time? You gotta start somewhere. So I But if you're I making sure that that's changing the date, that's gonna I, cause confusion. To a lot so of the hope the hope is I, is this year is, is gonna be a huge change for people, right? Mm -hmm. We know and with some people change isn't good, but over time, um, they'll start following in the place and you know um, and I guess just for an example off the top of my head if we had a day last year where we did 6,000 comp tickets in one day um, but this year you know like if 10 people show up right. and say hey, I, not I, it's, it's not when we start getting into the problems with these bigger numbers and hopefully people will then recognize future years Okay, I can only do this. Right. So on our end, it's going to be the push from us to make sure that when we are handing out <coughs> tickets, to let those people and inform those people that they can only use it for the last. Okay, well, we noticed you have your down on our road. Do you want to help with the questions? I would call that fire break. Something. Yeah, I mean they parked on our driveway, so you know, yeah. like that. And the problem is that it wasn't going this year. Yep. Well, we had it this year. Yeah. And then we're just concerned of coming and going. I mean, they've given us so, plan. And, and I will tell you that it's one of the things that I review with the lieutenant, especially if it's a new lieutenant, every morning. Make sure you tell the guys on Dixie Highway to watch for the flag and let these people get in and out of the street. Now, with that, they may have a good run of traffic coming and they want to just get it in. So as long as you can be somewhat patient, I mean, I've, I've been out there and I've seen people pull up and just start, and they just pulled yeah. up. Yeah, no. Um, oh, yeah. no, I've been out there for 20 minutes. It, yeah. That's too long. Yeah. That's too long. So please call me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Chip, thank you. Sue, does that answer your question or Wayne's yeah. question for that matter? Yeah. Um, Mr. DePaulo, you had. Uh, I had somebody that came in this afternoon. He said he's one of your vendors. And he had a suggestion, which I thought had some merit in it, was having a hard time understanding exactly what he said and I asked him to send me an email and I checked when I got in tonight it wasn't there so I'm going to mention it as best I can maybe you know what he's talking about he said well people are coming south down I-75 on, on, on I-75 to get to the festival when they pull off on one of the lanes there's actually two lanes available for them to go into and everybody pulling off thinks they only have one so the other lane is always completely open and it could take the traffic to shorten down the line. And I said, well, send me that in writing so I can actually figure out so, what he's uh, telling me. And he said, well, they need to put one of your you know, portable signs. And I said, well, I know there's one coming south of Flint because I've seen it. So I don't know if you know what he's referring to. I think he's talking about where you get on the ramp. Right. When, yeah. you, when you're coming over and you're coming down on the Dixie, a lot of people think they got one lane. Think they got one lane. Yeah. So exactly. we even have signage, I do believe, out there that says Renaissance Festival traffic right lane only. Oh, well, he was thinking, I think, that you could actually use the other lane. I don't know. And, 
That's why I asked him to send it. So yeah, if you hear from one of your vendors, you'll know who the guy was. And if you get that email, we'll I'll send it to you. And then we'll okay. address it. I was sitting there, <laughs> coming from Grand Lake, southbound, and both lanes were jammed. I could oh, not okay. get through. I That's why I, I said I, I, yeah. I couldn't quite visualize what he was talking about. I know you have one sign just up on the south yeah. end of Flint when you get there. Okay. Um, That's you. it. Thank you. So, I guess in review of the remaining agenda items, the discussion here has kind of touched upon all of them in some form or fashion. Danielle, thank you for the agenda and its uh, you know, attention to detail, but with your permission and with everyone's permission, what I would suggest is with regard to agenda items 10A, uh, say, Roman numeral 8 through 15, um, is there any specific questions, concerns, comments regarding those items? No. Okay. So then I would open it up to the performance guarantee. Um, Neil had touched on that earlier. I kind of had that dog-eared myself as an item of curiosity. Um, not simply because of the $300, you know, demarcation, um, but I guess just from a broader sense, the enforceability of it. It's very nebulous. Uh, there's a lot of subjectivity kind of built into it regarding, um, you know, just like for example, if I could refer to, refer to paragraph <coughs> two, um, like, who, who determines whether there was improvement, right? That's a wholly subjective term. We may look at it as being inadequate. You folks may look at it as being, we knocked it out of the park, so we've got a and, dispute and, on semantics. And, and rightfully so, that is a great question, Jeff, because last year I would have told you that I thought we made a huge improvement from the previous year. And you would say that's not true. So, that, so that's a problem. So, but then I think we, as a whole, festival planning commission township, need to establish. But we're not doing that. We're treating you in a totally deferential way, and we're allowing you with your discretion to make the decision. So even though I say it was good, you're, you say it's not. We're trusting you not to be punitive. We're trusting you to be reasonable and appropriate, and your discretion. is very much appreciated on behalf of the commission and the township for that matter. Right. There's an implied duty of good faith in every yes. contract, yes. right? Yes. So yes. It, it need not be said that we will deal with our, um, you know, our determination at arm's length in good faith. Right. My concern goes to the enforceability if there's a legitimate disagreement. With well, we're not going to. We're as long as we treat you in your opinion deferentially with respect to the decision so could we incorporate that provision into the guarantee? Yeah, that would make sense. That's a great point. Thoughts? I think just seeing them coming and having a conversation on Monday or Tuesday, whichever day, and having a dialogue about what did Bob or anybody what have happened last week? And, and them wanting to know yes. and have that conversation, we've come tenfold. It goes to the communication. Yeah. Yes, the yeah. communication. And I think as long as we stick to that, and we can do that for seven weeks. And, and remember, you also have an ordinance that covers. Right. So, and I know it's vague, and obviously Danielle and I interpreted uh, that one paragraph different. Than and, and if I could speak to that, oops, sorry. So just the, the, the phraseology of that particular section, subsection 32, refers to a violation of this section. Well, What's the, the section? entire section <laughs> is 541195. It's not just that. And that's where the confusion I believe. Right? That's, that's an ambiguous term. You know, that would be, you know, not yeah. good because that would call upon some disinterested third party to interpret it, you know. Right. So um, I don't know. I guess I just have some 
some concerns regarding the, the subjectivity and the nebulous nature of the performance guarantee. I greatly appreciate the spirit and the intention of even offering that up and the dedication to enhance communication and all this good, uh, you know, mindset. But I think we need to. I mean, if, if we're gonna. Well, in some respect, I get what you're saying. I agree with you, but the, the, the ordinance does speak to that. Maybe that's our guide. Well, that, I was going to get to that is, I think the bottom line is adhering to the ordinance. I mean, to me, that's the metric. Right. As long as they are adhering to the ordinance, if they violate the ordinance, then it, it falls upon the, it falls upon the title. So, Sure. So, this is what is this? It's out of uh, chapter 26, section 122, uh, publication. So, this refers to actions that may be undertaken by the board, correct? That's what I understand. This goes to revocation <coughs> of a license. When there's a failure to comply with uh, with the ordinance, like basically, right. uh, but that power is vested in the township board, not the commission. So I'm not sure what you're right. It's just a person whose license permits miscellaneous business regulation, section 26. So are you are you suggesting that this be incorporated into the guarantee? No, I'm just saying that's part of uh, that's part of the ordinance. Oh, that's already in there. Correct. So why why do we need any external guarantee? You don't. You technically don't. I mean, because and again, we appreciate the spirit. Yeah, of it, right? right. Absolutely. You but that's don't. in the ordinance. You have you have it in the ordinance, and the key thing is is upholding the enforcing the, the ordinance. But, right. But I think the reason why maybe I could be wrong. This came up at our last commission meeting mm -hmm. regarding a cash bond or some surety yep. on the part, yeah. a guarantee on the part of the festival um, for the township's benefit with regard to uh, a failure performance, um, a breach, if you will. Yeah. So, and I think that's, that's great, but you know, thinking back on that, that really wasn't necessary. The bottom line is, is enforcing the ordinance. Failure to comply to the ordinance, it's black and white in the ordinance, so penalties are. And the penalty, as Neil's pointed out, is yeah. potential revocation of yeah. okay. Um How can I disagree? Anyone else? Thoughts? Discuss putting this whole program together and revamping it. We did it with your ordinance in mind, and that is a, a, a long conversation. Like I said, I spent more time on the phone with Mr. Peterson than my own wife's buildings than well, and about I, this stuff. So. And I it, it, and I agree. Um, I, I do agree that you know the I guess the guide is already there in the in the codification, the ordinance, if you will. Um, the three hundred dollars. As I read it, um, it's for each event date. So it's not even per violation. It's like if the thing blows up on a Saturday, um, you know, we're, we have we have a guaranteed to throw three hundred dollars for that that calamity. Which, so it's almost it's. Uh, but three more cars that can be paid to be. <laughs> <laughs> so clearly, it's our effort to be in compliance. 
correct. Yes. Yeah, true. That's yes. Awesome. We're yeah. innocent. We're just relying on information that we derive from your administration. They say it translates into a three hundred dollar day penalty. We're then suggesting that unequivocally and without any input on our part, at your sole discretion, you can should you elect to make that decision that we would be fined three hundred dollars because that was the only figure we were providing. Sure. Appreciate it. And I guess just anybody want to offer thoughts or comments on that? I think what I'm hearing from Angela, maybe echoed by Dale, is that the performance guarantee is dare I say unnecessary? Uh, yeah, I mean it's ridiculous. It's a nice no, I mean it's a nice it's a nice gesture, but I think, the, I think the ordinance is very clear. It's there's a fine involved, but then also too, at the end of the day, there is empowerment there, not necessarily with this board, but main board to revoke license. So there we just need to start getting into the habit of when things go sideways need to get in, into a better habit of enforcing the ordinance, is all I'm saying. So I'm going to go to my intuitive sense of subtleties. Jim, are you do questioning? Do we have a vehicle? <laughs> do we have a vehicle, so to speak, for revocation? Is it immediate? Is it next week? If I were Mr. Peterson, I'd go a casket with no notice say you're done for the rest No, I, I, I think at that point, I think we had this conversation with the attorney. Um, and I think there's steps that are, that would have to be involved, right? I mean, the the penalty, the, the most minor penalty is a, is a fine, right? And that can't exceed, I think what the state statute is, it can't exceed, I think, $500 per off, offense or per day within the Michigan statute of conscience. But, so you have that as a minimum, the maximum would be a, a revoke of, of license. And that's where the attorney gets involved and that, that could take a period of time. That's not something that gets yanked under someone's feet overnight. Well, it, 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 if we had any expense for this somewhat out of thin air, but if we had any expense of <coughs> to monitor their procedures in the field to a third party. Um, in fact, for that matter, and I think about it, we will have somebody review the plan, and I would think the Renaissance Festival, as part of their permit fee, should be paying for our third party expert to review that. Um, but the point is, just <coughs> over there, hi, Nob, I, I always hear this thing about uh, for every minute after 11 o'clock. <laughs> I think there should be some something to shoot for, something that hurts a little bit if there is a screw up. I can interject on that for you. Go for it. So there's a fine now that's mine that if you use that and add leave it somewhere around ten thousand dollars for every minute after the concert was supposed to end, they get fined. Fine now does not get fined. Oh, so the it, 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 yeah, fine. Yeah. Right. So uh, Guns and Roses making a million dollars that night. $10,000 every minute afterwards, <coughs> it's not a, it's not a yeah. what, I'm, what I'm driving is, I, I think there need to take a quick back step. We've been dealing with this, at least on paper from the periodical <coughs> since 2015. I tremendously appreciate what you folks have done tonight. It's a great effort. Nevertheless, we've been dealing with it minimally for eight years. And I, I just think if we've got some type of negative reinforcement, it just helps. It's just the issue is you can only go as far as your ordinance. That, that's Michigan statute. I was looking at that more as we were sitting here talking and reading the statute. You can only go, you can't go any further than what your ordinance states. Yep, and I'll accept and that. that that's, the, that's the issue. If you, if you want something over and beyond that, the ordinance says you can't do it. You see what I'm saying? Uh, I so, think I can clarify this for you. you you're, you're right on target. But if you're comfortable that the spirit and the intent is what you were looking for, and you think this will be better, and it works out fine, and everybody's happy at the end of the event. If it doesn't, my concern is that the township residents at large don't pay for some business operations inability to manage their own service. So if, 
if that becomes a problem in the future, I think Angela's right on point. We would have to modify the ordinance and say, for example, you didn't pick a special year. You need somebody to check the gate count this time. And that's going to cost you $2,000. Well, then the, the administrative fee for the applicant has to go up $2,000 to cover that. If you decide that there's some other thing that has to be changed, that fee has to be changed to do it. You're, you're not going to close the festival in the middle of the festival without a court order already in place to do it. And that's going to be very difficult to do unless you can prove that somebody is willfully neglected. So I think you have to, for this year, see. And if this all works and everybody's happy, then I, I think we just have to get done to this and say, well, did we have some charges? Like we had fish deck charges this year that I know of that we billed. And, and Mr. Peterson said, I'll pay those. And we submitted the bill and they've been paid. So. And I don't know if anyone has insight, but that was, what was it? About 20, 8,000, I think. 28,000 yeah. yeah. So that's not without paying. And it's, and it's no, not like we're making it. money on it. That was just, yeah. that's a dollar for dollar expense that was spent for them. And so. Well, we can look at that and see if we think there's something different going forward, but I would say for this festival, you've got to work with the intent of the ordinance as it exists. If the uh, comfort level is that you feel there's being a good faith effort here, then I guess we need to see what happens. I realize the wild card is, and I don't know how to answer that, whatever they're going to do on MDOT. You just all pray to the MDOT gods when it gets close, I guess. But. Uh, subsequent to that, if something comes up and you think it's not going the right way, it can be changed, but we have to do it in the ordinance. And the reason it's set up like this now is, you remember when we wrote this, we did this for this and the hay, hay ride thing that Nick Nichols used to do oh, on yeah. the corner. And 300 bucks seemed like a reasonable fair uh, fee to get it uh, if there was something wrong. So ordinances get changed, but you have to have some substance for it. And what I'm sure Bill will tell you is, in the case of Pine Knob, that dollar fee was because it was very easy for an administrative judge to understand. You're keeping everybody up at night and it cost you 10 grand a minute to have guns and roses or whatever if you want to do it. And, and honestly, I don't think it's been done all that often because I called the planner there and said, I'd like a copy of the ordinance. He said, yeah, I think we got it somewhere. I don't know where it is. So I'm guessing it has a big And it's not, a, it's not an ordinance thing. It's, it's, it's a fee. It's a private entity that's yeah. basically charging that penalty. Yeah. The, so. But the, but the uh, vicinity, they still, they cannot exceed, I think, I, I don't want to say it's either 500 or 700, but they cannot yeah. exceed but, that amount. But you can't adjust your fee if you think there's some cost right. involved, like I have to have personnel have to, to do something, or, or something. you know. If we had to contract for 10 extra firemen or something, they can charge for that, like we do for the fire runs we do, because the chief actually brings a whole bunch of firefighters and they only work for us those seven weekends. Okay, you have to have something to allocate that cost to, and I'm all for not having the general public ever pay for some business entity operation, because it's not right to have me and you and everybody else paying for it. But you can't just change it, and you can't just shut the festival down. So I think you're on the right track. I mean, I saw this when Jim and I talked about it weeks ago and, and got it to all of you. I, if you're comfortable, this is a good faith effort. What I would ask is when you have the last meeting and you go over this, I'd like to have the video, the Renaissance Festival's presentation of these changes so we could put it out on YouTube and the general public could say, oh, I see what they did this year and kind of know what to expect because there is still one of unquantified issue about I don't really know what MDOT's doing yet. They don't they don't usually ask us, they tell us what they're doing. Okay. So we have to wait So for the same yes, Jackie. I got a question. In this video you said um and correct me if I'm wrong, you said that you weren't going to I thought it was mandated that you had to do a traffic engineering um for future but in your you said that only if there's a problem. If the township there was a problem that we will do a traffic management within 45 days of notice. Yeah, what I was just requesting as a suggestion was they they made changes which should should send it in the right direction, right? Get the engineering firm out there. They don't have to do the full blown study, just pick some key um, 
that what really flagged out is a, a key um, high attendance days and run out yourself. there and yeah and just do a check in terms of an increase in flow rate and compare it to the study that they just did and say okay it basically increased by x percent okay. that way they understand too if it's not enough then okay well what else do we got to do to open this up for us okay <clears throat> so it, there's no further discussion or questions for the, for the festival contingent here tonight. Am I close? No, that was good. Okay, not me. Um, I guess with regard to the remaining items of the agenda, there being none, um, it's my approve or it's my understanding we have to schedule a separate meeting for ultimate um, approval or denial of the special use permit and has to come by way of a public hearing, correct? Mm -hmm. um, do we discuss dates for that at this time or is that just something that will be TBA? Um, I, mean, I need a notice to go out 15 days prior, so <clears throat> I wouldn't be able to get that into the paper until third. Tuesday that you're unavailable or that week? It's a Tuesday. <coughs> so I will So could we do any other day then that week? I could uh how about Monday? I'll throw it out there. Monday the nineteenth. We're closed. It's June Evans. You'd be the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Don't take it away from me. Don't take my holiday. I mean the twenty second? The Thursday the twenty second? I don't, I, I don't really like that, but I don't have to be here. I just need a quorum. I can attend. I can do I can, I can Thursday. Yes. How early time. can we do it? Do we have to do it wait till 7 o'clock or can we do it like at 5? I can do it at 5. 4. I can do it I three can do time. That. 3. <laughs> I, I will, 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. Going once? I can do 5 o'clock. That's, that's, my, that's my early. Okay. Time. How about 5 o'clock? Sorry. On June 22nd. <laughs> That's the public hearing. And you're going to send it out to us. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're do a public hearing. And we can approve it at that time or disapprove it at that time. What's that? We do this. On the 22nd, it's, it's the, the public yeah. hearing. Yeah. We want, I mean, my and we can or cannot yeah. approve. I can't hear you. There's too much going on. At the public hearing, is yes. that when we would approve or disapprove? Right. Yeah, approve okay. or deny. Okay. No. Five o'clock, not good? Six o'clock? Well, they're bringing up a valid point. If it's okay, well, then I'm going to meeting we should move it out we will set a special meeting i have to go back i have to look at my calendar i don't okay. have my my calendar right here in front of me we'll have to set a special meeting and i will send an email as to what worked for everybody okay. okay all right um i guess that brings us hopefully to a happy conclusion for tonight's meeting uh, any other comments or questions before we entertain a motion to adjourn i make a motion we adjourn <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Evening the pool. We'll do 70 leagues tomorrow.
over here. Yes. Could you walk on? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mom. Oh, that's why I said. 